What's going on, guys? Welcome to the podcast, and uh, hey, Happy New Year. This is the first podcast of the year, which is pretty exciting. So, um, Happy so here New we Year, are. guys. Happy New Year. Happy Absolutely. New Year to you, Brian. you guys had a wonderful end of the year, and hopefully, uh, you know, it was funny. I We were together. Jay was at the house. That's right. It was a blast. We were in our little bubble, and... Um, and uh, I, a friend of mine from Australia, Peter Birch, had texted me earlier in the day, you know, and said, obviously, it was their new year, about 12 or 13 hours before us. And my question to him was, uh, how's 2021? Is it better? <laughs> and, uh, and of course, he said it was the same, which was a little disappointing. But, I know. Uh, I was hoping for uh, yeah. worlds of difference. Yeah, I know. It's pretty much the same, but that's okay. No, to, <laughs> I, I really do have optimism for 2021. Uh, I think it's uh, got a lot of uh, potential. I mean, as everybody knows, when the clock uh, struck midnight, it wasn't going to change overnight. <laughs> uh, but we do. Uh, I do think that there's some some really... You know, I, I, I think, and again, I, I try to look at things optimistically. Um, I think that by the middle of the year, sometime ish, maybe even a little bit sooner, maybe a little later, we'll see what happens. I think that, uh, there's going to be just a, an incredible change. And, um, and I think that everyone's going to really enjoy life. Everything, dude, yeah, yeah, literally every li- little, going every to the store thing, yeah, without li- masks. Yeah. Every little thing that we, uh, used to love and took for granted, we will now appreciate every minute of that. And I think it's going to really change the vibe of the world uh, for the better. I agree. You know, when we get there, we don't know. You know, and if it's May or June or if it's July or August or if it's October, or September, doesn't really matter. Just know that we will get there and That's we right. have to stay positive and stuff like that. So a um, little breakdown of what we're going to be doing today. First off, of course, uh, as always on my solo podcast, I rely on you guys for super chats. Uh, those super chats will keep the conversation going in the direction you guys wanted to go and the questions that you have. And what I want to do is, is, is there's going to be two different aspects to this podcast tonight. Uh, the first part is going to be talking about reptiles, talking about my experience, trying to give you guys helpful tits, tits, helpful tits, dude. Helpful Everyone tits. could use a pair. <laughs> Everybody could use a pair of helpful tits, uh, helpful tips. Uh, and then the second part, and I may lose you guys on this. Okay. And maybe I listen, I encourage you to stick around for the second part of this podcast. I'm going to talk about my anxiety. I'm going to talk about my journey of anxiety, uh, and how we don't have to settle for, uh, feeling anxious or feeling depressed or mental ability, you know, mental health issues. We don't have to settle. And so many people settle because they think that that's just the way it's going to be for the rest of their life. And I don't agree with that. So I, I do encourage you to stick around for that, even though it may not be reptile based because it's a couple things. Number one, the world is suffering right now. And, and, and so many people are suffering. And if you are healthy and mentally, that's awesome. But there's a good chance that someone around you is not. And you may, by listening to what I have to say, you may uh, get a little bit better perspective on on the way they feel. If how to you, help. and Yeah, how you, yeah, if you don't. So, But I'm not going to talk about that first because I realized if I came right out of the gate and started talking about anxiety, I would lose you guys and stuff like that. And I don't want to do that. So uh, first off, um, I'll talk about some things. I'll definitely answer your guys' super chats. As always, we'll let you guys help. And I, I always encourage that uh, in my solos in particular because I don't have anyone else to talk to except for Jay over there in the other control room. And, and we talk all the time. So and we, we want to talk to you. Yeah, so we want the, the conversation. So uh, first, and foremost, you know, one of the things I want to accomplish on the solos, uh, in particular, is, is kind of just giving you guys my experiences, right? You know, and I tell people all the time, you know, I don't like to really be called a reptile expert. Uh, and the reason for that is, as I always say, that we always are learning. You know, I don't think that there's been a more dramatic uh, change in my perception of keeping animals uh, in the last, say, four years than, than anyone I know. You know what I mean? Like, I went from you know, being really just a breeder, uh, mainly a minimalist uh, cage guy to being someone that now really enjoys, uh, you know, these enriching cages and, and, and so on like that. And again, I've always said that I will never go. And number one, I, keep, I still keep snakes in rack systems. You know, I mean, I, I, I probably will the rest of my life, quite frankly. Uh, so I'll never discourage people from doing that if it seems to be right. I do think there are certain species that probably don't do well in rack systems. And I think that I encourage people to, um, to, to, to understand their species. But that being said, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the most knowledgeable guy on reptiles. But I have been doing it for 30, almost 33 years. And... Just, I always tell people, you know, you can go to college, 
like, let's say a doctor, for instance, you know, doctor goes to school for whatever. I don't know. What is it like? Eight to 10 years. Eight to 10 years. He's going to, he or she is going to learn more about medicine in their residency when they are hands on with patients than they did that entire time. You betcha. Right. And, And it's the same thing with everything. So I, I actually know a lot of people that are so much more book smart than I am when it comes to reptiles. You know, they've read every single book. They they know so much. But uh, but the practical knowledge that you gain, uh, not just from, you know, every year you do it, you gain an unbelievable amount of knowledge because you see things that you didn't know were possible. You hadn't read in a book. Uh, you know, one of my old sayings is always like, you know, the, the, the biggest problem about reptiles, uh, is, is, is that they don't read the books, right? You know, <laughs> I love like, that. That's good. you know, because, uh, you read the book and wait, wait a second, wait a second. You weren't supposed to do that. You weren't supposed to be born you with a heart outside. To be yeah, doing yeah. That. Wait, wait, I've never seen that in that book. Uh, not that books aren't bad. I think books are great. I think the internet is great. I think that every bit of knowledge that you can gain, you should gain. But that being said, you will find it's, it's much like I said, you know, when I was two years into keeping reptiles and breeding reptiles as a business, I probably thought I was really had a handle on it. And I look back then and I just had no idea how little I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And then and I, I feel the exact same way now about running the reptile zoo, right, is that, you know, I'm two and a half years into running a reptile zoo. And I'm sure 10 years from now, I'll look back and realize how little I didn't know at this point, right? Because I'm going to learn so much um, over the next 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and whatever. So my point is, I want to bring that 33 years of knowledge to you, whether you're going to keep reptiles, enjoy reptiles, be an educator for reptiles, breed reptiles, whatever it is for you, we've kind of done it all in a way, right? You know what I mean? We've worked with hundreds of species of reptiles we right now currently work with about 250 species of reptiles um but i bred i I don't even well i'm sure over 150 species of reptiles i've bred um over the last 33 years and again that doesn't make me great it doesn't make me anything it just means i've been doing it for a long time and i've also had a passion where i actually admire like jeff ronnie for instance is the boa file right you know is his name of his business and and uh, not only does he do bows, but he also builds cages uh, called the bow file cages. And and I found it interesting when I went and visited Jeff, who's a great guy, and I loved his collection. It was really quite amazing for boas. Um, is that he's the only guy that I know in the reptile business that has worked with one species and subspecies, but I don't even know if he works with constrictor constrictor. I think he may just work with imperator. Wow. I think I don't think he's ever even worked with anything other than imperator. And uh, that's rare for someone to be, work with one species for 30 years. And he's been doing it for like 30 years. It's impressive, well. yeah. But I've had this very diverse curiosity about all kinds of reptiles, from boas to pythons to, you know, colubrids to, to you, you know, you name it. And so I've wanted to work, and now, of course, lizards and stuff like that. And I've wanted to work with uh, with all these things. So, so I want to bring you that knowledge and that experience and give you probably some perspective on things that most people would keep secret. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, I want you to succeed, whether it's keeping it, breeding it, being successful. Uh, And the other thing is I've got nothing to lose, right? I don't care. You know, I don't, number one, I never looked at the business as a competition. You know, I mean, I've always looked at the people that were on my level as, as friends. And I never thought that they their success would somehow hinder my success, right? You know, I, I believe all ships rise with the tide and, and and I encourage my competitors to be successful. And then that's still that way on YouTube and social media. doesn't mean that you can't have a healthy competition where you're of like, course. oh, I want to catch this guy or I don't want this guy. You know, but it doesn't mean that you can't be, you know, healthily, you know, looking at it that way, but you shouldn't be jealous. You shouldn't be envious. You should just be motivated by it, right? Yeah. And and the other thing is, is that now, although we breed reptiles, and BHB is a is a is a pretty, you know, it's a decent company. You know, I mean, we employ a bunch of people, and and we 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 produce and sell a lot of animals. Um, I you know, it's not my business. It's not my, it's my business, but it's not my income anymore. It's not what I need. So so I don't really care. So I I don't mind giving out those little secrets to you guys that maybe other breeders don't want to give out or experiences that they don't want to give out because number one, I'm going to tell you everything I, 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 over the course of the next year or whatever that I'm doing these solos, if I do them for three weeks or for 52 weeks, um, you know, I'm going to give you every bit of ever, 
information that I have, but it's up to you, you know, and, and the downside is really, and I, and I don't mean to be critical, but I could tell every single one of you how to be successful, or at least for me and everybody's success is different. You got to remember that, for sure, right? For sure. But, um, and still nine out of 10 people won't be successful because they won't do what it takes to be successful. You, you can tell people what to do. Step and, for step. And they're yeah. still gonna not do it. Either they don't want to, they're lazy, they lose focus, you know, whatever the case is. Uh, and, and one of the things that, that you know, I always talk about is, is, is the stick to of, of things, right? And that's basically like, you know, you, you know, they always say, right, you never know how close to, to success you were when you quit, you know? And, and, and so you don't quit. You know, you don't quit until it doesn't mean that there aren't times where you say, all right, I admit defeat and it's time to move on. I beat this thing to a ground. But if you really believe in something and you're passionate about it, you just keep rolling, man. You just keep pushing. And uh, let's hit a few super chats before we get too deep into this because you guys are starting to go in and I don't want to lose track of this. And like I said, you guys guide the conversation as well. And I want you to ask questions on both anxiety and uh, reptiles, keeping, breeding, business, all that type of stuff. Those are the questions I really want because I want to answer those questions questions and try to be as much of a, uh, a resource for you guys and a resource that is in it, you know, has no, uh, you know, no kind of horse in the race, right? Exactly. Like I yeah, don't, yeah. I don't, you know, it doesn't affect me if you're successful. So I want you to be successful. So, uh, you will get the most honest and forthright answers for me. Every single question you have, um, but, uh, let's go ahead and hit a couple. Of course, dude, Darth dildos in the building <laughs> nice, and he I said, uh, I'm going to be a new regular. So thanks. Oh, Darth. well, thanks so much, Darth. I appreciate you, man. It means the world to us, uh, you know, on all our podcasts, you know, obviously we, we do three a week now. We, we might that do might more one, in the future. It might be more, might be five days a week at some point in the future, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I can't wait to say your name more in the future, dude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that's a great name. <laughs> uh, Hunter says, love your solo, I'm guessing podcast, it says vlog, but I uh, wish I could stay awake through it all very late here. Please just keep being you. You're an amazing person. Well, thank you so much, number one. Number two, please, when you wake up in the morning and you're doing your dishes or whatever you happen to be chuck doing, just, yeah, just chuck it on. And you can also listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff too. So if you don't want to you know, use bandwidth for YouTube, um, Pop it on a, a, on any of those uh, podcast stations. Just pop your headphones on and you can listen. Uh, Jose says, may you and your family have a great 2021. Oh, thanks, Jose. I appreciate you, man. You too. I think, like I said, 2021's got a lot of great things. I will say that I really had high hopes for 2020. But, you know, Jay and myself yeah. brought up a good point. You know, there, listen, and I'm going to talk about anxiety later on. Hopefully I won't lose half my, my viewership when that goes down. But, um you know, it's important to me and, and, uh, and that's all that matters. And, and even though, you know, five or six months of really, 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 really difficult anxiety, um, hit me, uh, I wouldn't really trade it in if that makes any sense. You know, right. I, I think it's important that I went through that and, and, um, it always is, you know, it, it, it's going to define the rest of my life. And, and even when I was in my deepest moments, you know, and in, in the pain that was, unbearable. I mean, not, not just like, Oh, I'm a little anxious. I'm talking unbearable, uh, pain, mental pain. Um, I still felt like this is going to be great. This is going to be really good. What, what's happening you to always me right now. That, yeah. yeah and, and so, uh, so we'll talk more about that later. Uh, Caleb says, Hey Brian, just wanted to ask if you knew any good rack companies for baby colubrids rack. Yeah, yeah, like uh, I guess like colubrid rack. So, you know, I really, if you want to go with like an ABS plastic rack, which I think is the best for baby colubrids because, you know, there's really not a steel option that makes sense at all, uh, I would look at Reptile Basics. Okay? okay, Reptile Basics has a really great rack system. As a matter of fact, why don't we punch that up real quick? Yeah, Just you got Reptile it. Basics and go to the rack systems. They, you know, it's CNC, a very, Rich is, is a super innovative guy. Um, I was out there in, in, in the Carolinas uh, last year, visited his place, was highly impressed not only with his place, but, you know, I've always liked Rich. I mean, he's a really good dude, man. And, and uh, but his rack systems, you can see right here. Are, are right just, here? Yeah, they're beautiful. I mean, they're really good. They are really and, nice. And there's some small, he had a small colubrid rack. Now, I don't know if it's there. If, if he doesn't have it there, send him an email because he sent me a uh, uh, uh or he showed me a small colubrid rack yeah you can go to his contact, go to contact page, page contact and he saw page. showed me a small baby colubrid rack that was dope as could be that he had been working on now i don't know if he's commercially selling it yet but i know he had had them there i looked at him i literally was looking at him and thinking man this might be good for me in the future um 
so that's, I mean, I, I'm not saying there's not other good racks. I'm saying the thought that went into these racks, the way they're heated, the way they are, it's, it's he's pretty, a smart dude. Yeah. yeah for sure. Good, 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 good dude. So check out reptile basics. Um, I think it's Ak Akubra, Akubra? Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe hey, says, Joe. uh, just drop in some happy new year wishes to the both of you, Brian and Jay tips on raising up my first Varanus. Uh, First off, thank you. Happy yeah, New thank Year. Thank you. Happy New Year, uh, brother. It, you know, it depends what type, type of veranda it is. You know, I mean, there's, you know, Ackies are very different than, you know, lace monitors. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, they they all really, really require different care, uh, different heat. If you put you know, if you put what kind it is down in the comments below, yeah, I'll try yeah, to look yeah. for it for you. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. tag at checking in and I'll yeah, find it. But but I will say you will love your veranids. I mean, they are uh, my favorite some animal, the, some of the coolest animals on the planet. And, and so whatever it is. But, yeah, I'm always happy to help out. Uh, Mr. Simple Man says, uh, how is RJ doing? RJ's doing really good, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, we are working with him, and the idea behind RJ, uh, I've mentioned it, is that 3.0, the expansion, will we're going to allow people to feed much like Gatorland does, right? You know, so Gatorland, <laughs> it's going to be different because obviously they it's have a be so marsh dope, and though. stuff. But, you know, they call their alligators up, and then, you know, you can get, you know, a foot and a half away from these giant alligators and throw food into their mouth. Um, we want the exact same experience here at the Reptarium where we'll be able to call RJ over. He'll open his mouth. You won't have to hand him anything because obviously that can be very dangerous. Yeah. And and up until now, that was how I always fed him, but just by handing it to him. Um, but I can't let people do that. You know, that'd be very, very dangerous. Someone's going to lose an arm <laughs> that way. Um, and I, I always say, I'm, I'm always shy. I was just talking to not this Jay, our other Jay, uh, Jay Tingle, um, uh, today about how, you know, as a reptile guy or maybe even an animal guy, you expect people to have Aptitude. similar, <laughs> similar, uh, you know, yeah, uh, you know, kind of weariness uh, towards like the yeah. face of an animal. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. And, and I was feeding alligators today, little alligators, tiny ones, you know, three, five month olds, four month olds, whatever. And, uh, and I'm always so surprised at how like, like people don't get it. Number one, they'll put their, they're, as they're like with these tongs, handing an alligator a food with the other alligator an inch away from their hand. You know what I mean? Like they'll just like put their hand right to the things, like like reach over an alligator <laughs> to feed another one, and this one's ready to bite them. Or the other thing is, is that they'll like put the food, you know, like six inches away from the animal, thinking the animal is going to somehow come jump Leap for it or jump, something. Yeah. Like put it in its mouth. It's it's <laughs> sitting there with its mouth open. Put it in its freaking mouth. And so that happens all the time. And it, and it just and it just happened. It surprises but, you, know, you though, right? Because like I'm does. not I'm not like a pro animal handler at all. But like I do get what you're saying. Like you should have some type of aptitude. You have a dog. You wouldn't yeah, do just, that to a dog. Just a know? little intuition. Like yeah. okay, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, uh, so I'm always surprised. So I have to take that into account with RJ, right? I can't let somebody accidentally think they, you know, stick their hand in his mouth. So, so I've got to always make sure that they're going to be a foot, foot and a half away and throw food into its mouth. So we're training him now to, to do that, to come over and just open his mouth and me throw the food in. But I've been feeding him for 10 years by hand, so it's going to take a little while. But he's doing really, really well, and, and, and he has kind of gotten it. You know, he's going to get better. I, yeah, for sure. And uh, so that will be something that will happen at, at Reptarium. Um, Trey point uh, oh. Trey point oh. Yeah, that's what we're calling it now. Yes, Trey. Mac's point in the building. Mac, what's up, man? We love you, brother. This, yeah, he said, uh, yeah. this year brought the most brutal manifestation of my anxiety disorder, but mm. the work all of you do in this awesome chat community helps me immensely. Well, Mac, I appreciate love you, man. you, man. Love you. And uh, st obviously, I know you'll stick around. He's one of our mods, and he's yeah. always here. And, and we appreciate you so, so much, because I know More you put you a know, lot man. of your time uh, into this, and we appreciate you guys. Uh, but... Uh, um, stick around because I'm going to talk about anxiety. I'm going to talk about some things, and I'm sorry that you dealt with a lot of it, but I'm going to give you some ideas of how I dealt with it and how uh, I've been conquering it and will eventually completely conquer it and put it behind me for the rest of my life. Um, and I want to talk deeply about that, but that'll be later on in the podcast. Uh, Demonic Reptiles says, uh, huge fan, Ooh. any chance Angolian pythons will be added to the reptarium? Yeah. Weird yeah. question, how to handle the body of a large constrictor that dies? Okay, first part. Yeah, I, absolutely. By the way, <laughs> demonic reptiles is awesome. I love that. Dude. Um, so uh, yes, Angolans are a must. I mean, I used to have Angolans years ago. 
Uh, definitely want to get back into them. I mean, some of the most incredible, and you know, if you love ball pythons, you're going to love Angolan pythons. I mean, obviously they're they're like a cross between like a a, a carpet python and and, 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 and a, a ball, ball python. python. Wow, almost. like almost identically. That, that yeah, almost would be like perfect. a bre- almost like a brettles, you know, cross with a ball, a, python. a ball python. And they're very <laughs> interesting. They have this kind of beaded skin, much like rough scale sambo's. Um, mm. They uh, they do get larger than a ball python, but they do not ball up. They don't ball up like a ball python. Uh, they they can sometimes be a little bit snippy, but okay. but I mean they'll defend themselves by biting, not by hiding. Um, but but they also can be very very docile, very cool animals. Like I said, work with them a number of occasions, uh, and and so I I want more Angolan pythons for sure. And it's uh, you, you can guarantee you there will be Angolan pythons in the reptarium. Uh, I, I would say sooner than later, to be honest with you. And then lastly, how do you, you know, listen, you could do a couple things, you know, you could do with, with if, if a large constrictor passes away and we've had them obviously over 30 something years, you know, we've had animals die from all kinds of reasons, you know, even, you know, especially, um, you know, very similar to what's happening with, with, what has happened with ball pythons and green tree pythons with nidovirus, uh, Burmese pythons had nidovirus years ago. Of course, we didn't know of nidovirus at the time. And, and some people used to call it mycoplasm and stuff like that, but mm. nevertheless, I'm sure I guarantee you is, is nido. And it wiped out probably 80% of the collections in the country of, of Burmese wow, that's pythons. So crazy. It was crazy. I mean, literally 80% of the Burmese in the country probably died from nidovirus, uh, 15 years ago, including almost all of ours. Um, and that's the reason why we now have four, Bur- five Burmese pythons total, and we won't bring any in unless they're tested with NIDO because because we we don't I mean we love our Burmese pythons and For sure. once they have them they're, they're, you can't just can't save them so we've lost big giant snakes and and we've also lost giant snakes to old age you know we. We, we just talked about African rock pythons, you know, well, that's actually coming up in a vlog here in the next yeah, couple yeah, of yeah. days. Uh, you know, I had one that died after 22 years. She was 18 foot. So you could do one of two things. You can bury it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what the law is against that, but uh, I feel like you, it's I, okay. I, it's I, your I yard. Sorry. Do yeah, what you I think do. you can do with that. Uh, you know, some people actually send them out to get, uh, you know, the bones uh, made into a what? cool, cool, you know, kind of. Rearticulated you know, yeah, and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes even uh, you know stuffed and so on like that. Um, uh, or, or the you know, I mean, I think I think those are probably the best options. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, if if I have if I haven't thankfully you know I haven't had a large constrictor die in a long time years. Uh, hopefully I don't. But when I do, I think that like. I think I will probably get the, the like a, a bone structure. Yeah, you have to. I think it'd be sure. really cool. So, uh, so those are some of the things you can do. Um, uh, Stephanie says, "Been bin wa- binge watching old vlogs. Just out of curiosity, do you still have Laverne and Shirley preserved? Just thought it was cool. Yeah. I do, I do. As a matter of fact, in my office, we should show um, that. We haven't done that. In yeah, a while. yeah, cool. yeah. We could show it. Yeah, we do so, still have it preserved. That was a tough day, but thank you so much for watching and, uh, um." Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you guys know two-headed snakes were uh, uh, something I was uh, really passionate about. I really wanted to have some a, a set of two-headed snakes here at the Reptarium, and thankfully Ben and Jerry have been awesome, would have been man. awesome. They've been doing great. They they're just fantastic. But uh, but it, you know, we we lost you know cookies and cream, Laverne and Shirley, and one other um, a, a Mexican black king. We we lost. Oh wow, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, t- three sets of of two headed before we eventually got. And what I said was after the third set, which was uh, cookies and cream actually, but cookies and cream we didn't think was going to make it. I mean, it had some kinks and yeah. it, it 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 was doubtful. That was like what it was is that Grass you know just straws, to give you an idea, yeah. like baby two headed snakes typically cost about fifteen thousand dollars. Laverne and Shirley uh, were it cost me fifteen thousand dollars. Cookies and cream I bought for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, and so to me it was worth rolling the dice i mean not that fifteen hundred dollars is, is chump change but it was ten percent the cost of another one so i thought why not give it a go and yeah. and, and and we did and, and and it didn't work out but um laverne and shirley was a tougher one because it it would they were eating and uh and they ate and just died uh so after the three losses i literally was like i'm never buying a baby two-headed snake again and, and i still won't i will never buy another two-headed snake baby would i buy a yearling again absolutely i would buy another set for sure 100 percent for sure right now um and, and obviously you pay a lot more for yearlings you started know, that are, one, yeah. are well started um but yeah so we we, we still have laverne and shirley uh preserved um sharon says happy new year brian and jay happy new year happy new year to you sharon thank you so much for always being there for us um time with i think it's fiblian i don't know exactly how to pronounce it but let's call it time 
And uh, uh, Time says, uh, my whole family loves the vlogs. My blind daughter recognizes your voice from the other room and comes running to watch Brian. That's awesome. Also, you have inspired my wife and I to breed false chameleons. <gasps> We were Ooh, just talking we were about just talking that. about false chameleons, uh, really cool animals, and talking about how we'd like to get them. So if you breed them, let us know. We'd like to buy some captive ones. Tell your daughter I said thank you, and uh, and God bless you guys for this new year. Uh, Dane just threw a dollar for some love. What's up, Dane? Appreciate you. And uh, Hunter says, shit. Whoa. Meant podcast. It's going to be one thirty. Been yeah. a very long day. Thank you for helping me get through tough times on my second deployment. Oh man, well thank you for, for your, your service. service, man. You know, my my um my uh cousin is actually about to be deployed now for the eighth time. His wow, eighth, that's so crazy. Cuz that's a man. different breed, right? Cuz yeah. there's people that join the military, they go for 4 or 8 years, which even 8 years is a long time, you know. It is. But a lot of people go for 4, and then yeah. there's the people that are like career military. Yeah, and then you know? there's people that are career military like him that keep getting deployed yeah, <laughs> you know that's I mean? crazy like, like and you you know that isn't like i mean that's that he he requests it you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not like you can't be for i i don't i think you only can be forced, forced probably once, once right? i think um i'm not sure because i don't know enough about the military but um uh, but yeah he's going for his eighth time and he goes into the shit i mean he goes into bad places you know he's he's <sighs> uh crazy. i can't he's like i think they call it i can't remember i never remember what they call it and he's like he's a, a navy guy but he's not a SEAL. He's special forces. He's the he's a medic, right? So he's a nurse uh, that goes out with like the SEAL teams and stuff That's like crazy. that. So he's a he, so he's not a SEAL, but he had to go through the SEAL training. Yeah, he had to go through all. He's the, hanging you know, with them. Yeah, yeah. He goes out with so a group of like twelve guys will go out into the bush for like two months by themselves. You know, with like no backup, no anything. And he's the guy that is like the medic. You know, he's keeping them alive. The, he's the guy that when they get shot, he fixes them. And he also loses a lot of people too. He's he's. he's, he's, he's <laughs> I, I, I know, mean, dude. Yeah, it's how it is, dude. Of shit, man. He's that many it. deployments, you're definitely yeah. going to lose some friends. And he's always sure. going into and like this next one, he goes in like two weeks. Uh, he doesn't even know where he's gone. Has no clue. They don't. They don't because they him. can't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want anyone knowing, him. right? They don't tell him. He just knows it's not going to be a nice place. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't care. I think he loves. I think he just. Loves Some people it. live on that yeah. edge, you know. Yeah, I think that's what he likes. Uh, State forty eight says coming to see you twenty twenty one. Nice. I recently invested money into a herd. Of albino cicadas, I like that. Whoa! Wh which could begin producing this year with revenue uh, received. Should I diversify? Any tips on growing YouTube? Uh, first off, that's awesome. When you get some baby albino cicada, I really like to get one. I know they are a little weak, a little bit tough, um, but they are super, super cool. The ones that do well do really well and, and are really cool. I think that um, I, you know, I think diver so it's interesting you say that. I think there's two real ways to go about things. I talked about Jeff Ronnie being very specific to one species that and niche. just doing it, you know, doing it, you know, really figuring it out, right? You know, like I'm going to work with boas or I'm going to work with salcad or I'm going to work with whatever. Um, yeah, you can go that way and become the expert. Just, just learn it, live it, love it, and be the best at it. Uh, or you can be diverse. I've always taken the diversification route. Not, not only... Uh, have I taken that route in my reptile company, but now I've taken that route in life, right? You know, I'm very diverse. I, I, I want lots of different income streams, different investments that have nothing to do with one another. Um, I want when that way, when one thing goes down. So my point is, is that to me, and it's not that I'm saying what I feel, not what you, you should do is I, I feel like, you know, okay, well, what if albino cicada, because they're a little bit touchy and, 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 and it is tough when they're maybe a $5,000 tortoise and you're going to have a percentage of them that aren't going to live, you know what I mean? And, and you're, you know, to be a good business person, if you sell that $5,000 tortoise and it dies, you're going to have to replace it. Right. So that's $10,000. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's just b baked into that project. You know, you have to understand that. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, but what if all of a sudden one day people start, you know, hey, look at the spider gene in the ball pythons. It just took one uh, idiot to go out there and start saying that, you know, don't breed spiders, it's animal abuse. And, 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 and it caught on to the point where spider ball pythons became almost like, you know, if you were breeding them, you were, you know, the worst person on the planet. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen with the albino sulcata because it certainly didn't happen with albino iguanas, which have similar issues, right? They're, they don't see very well. They're sometimes a little bit weak and still 
know people love albino iguana. So I, I, I would hope that wouldn't happen with the albino sulcata. Um, and like I said, I, I personally would like to get, get some albino sulcata. But, but I think diversification is probably a great idea. If you want to stick with tortoises, stick with tortoises. You know, I mean, get, get into whether it's, you know, I mean, obviously if you can produce aldalbaros, you know, you're always going to sell out Dalbros. Yeah, I mean? always. Uh, Galops, you know, the problem is with the permits. So it gets a little bit tricky and stuff like that, but it's still not a bad... You're going to sell every Galop, but you're going to make sure you're doing... You know, legally, yeah, legally, because you know that happened recently uh, in Arizona where a guy got his whole entire collection confiscated because... Uh, uh, they said he was breaking the law. I think he ended up winning that lawsuit against the government. And, but by the time he got his tortoises back that were had been seized, I think like a third of them died wow. in, in, their, in the government's hands. Wow, thanks. So, you know, just think of all those things, you know what I mean? But but diversification. Then as far as YouTube, just uh, listen, YouTube is a tough game, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. It's 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 freaking doesn't it's a, make a lot of sense. It is a grind. It doesn't sure. make a lot of sense. You can do the same thing uh, a thousand times and get... Th- a thousand different uh, results results and, and that's a very different difficult thing to live with but uh but that doesn't mean you you, you, you stop you just keep rolling and, yeah and, uh, yeah the biggest thing you've always taught me was just be consistent be consistent doesn't matter if you're yeah. doing one two three five days a week seven yeah. days a week but yeah. do that all the time yeah because as soon as you stop you know I, I i again it goes back to what i was saying you never know when your success is going to hit i've i've seen youtubers that have grinded for two or three years and with very minimal success and then all of a sudden just blow up yep just i know where blow up it's something that like my son noah is going through right now he changed his his thing a lot and he was getting you know 10 to twenty thousand views per video uh doing silly challenges and stuff like that he wasn't happy with that format he decided to change to a completely different way and 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 now he's getting maybe five thousand views a yeah. video and and i keep telling him you got to keep grinding because the thing i'm concerned about is that you know he might start to get that momentum again and then he gives up before he gets it done yeah. and i actually think that in his case you know i think his videos are much better now than they've ever been for I sure think, i Easy. think that if you look back on his challenges maybe they they reach more eyeballs but they weren't as good of videos now yeah. they're much more compelling better storytelling more interesting content i think it's just a matter of time and i think you should just do the same thing if you're into the youtube is just keep on being passionate tell the story get involved and um you know i mean it's like gary v says you know gary vanacek says you know it's it really is social media is more about quality or quantity than quality yeah um Quality is very subjective, right? You know, I mean, uh, some like, people like the like the less quality, the better. Yeah, some people want it to be as raw as could be. Other people want it to be, you know, Casey Neistat or P- or Peter McKinnon. Yeah. Um, it just depends. So quality is is subjective. Uh, quantity, uh, and, and it's one of the things like you can put out a hundred videos, ninety nine of them might suck and do terrible, and then one of them pops and gets five million views, yeah. and it changes your life. And you that know? one that got five million views, you might have taken yeah. the least amount of time to work on, and it might be the crappiest video yeah, my out most, of all of them. Yeah, my most successful video on my vlog channel was a video I almost didn't shoot. That's right. Um, That's right. I literally was like, I don't think I want to shoot this. I shot it. And it turned out to get, you know, 28 million views. So, um, you know, so, it's just, so you just never know, you know. So Throw stuff grinding. at the wall. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, the more the Mike's better. in the building. Mike's, what's up? Happy uh, New Year, brother. He said, uh, sup, guys. I hope your New Year's going well. Yeah. Any hook companies you like specifically? Got to get some. Uh, oh, okay. Snake hooks. Yeah, Got yeah. it. Got to get some decent ones for my boas to get them trained better. Yeah, you know, it's really tough. Uh, I've worked with a lot of different hook companies, uh, and obviously the go-to has always been Midwest. Um, but they're, they're you know, they do the same thing as everyone else does. And I don't know that there's really any, there's, I wish I'm so bad. There's that, you know, my favorite hook I've ever had was uh, given to me by a company up in Canada. And Which I one is so it? Sorry. It's the wood one. Oh, that thing's it, bad. I love dude. it. I use it every, almost every, every time I grab a snake hook for a decent sized snake, I grab that. Yeah. That snake I hook. even too. Um, yeah. It's but cool unfortunately one. I can't remember the name of their company. So get back, Mike, I'll find it and I'll send it to you. But uh, they're great guys up in Canada. And, uh, but you know, a hook is a hook is a hook and um, yeah find something you, know, so you find like something you like and and you know i i don't i don't know that anyone's dominating that hook game you know <laughs> i mean i think uh maybe somebody should yeah that's... maybe someone needs to come out with something that's Ooh. really innovative mm. uh a cooper joe came back and said sorry should have been more specific it was a nile monitor okay now niles are a little bit difficult i'm not gonna lie to you man um 
they're they're touchy you know i mean they're it's hard to tame them i mean it's it's one of the harder varanids to tame out uh we've done it with abasuku uh chicken strip we've worked on and, and sh it's still not 30 you know? if that and, yeah. yeah and and so uh you've got a, a little uphill battle you know the socialization part the actual animals do very well uh, make sure you have an extremely varied diet as babies and youngsters you want a lot of bugs not so much meat uh, and then you can slowly transition to more meat, but still giving bugs from time to time. Um, you got to remember these animals forage in the wild. You know, that's yep. what they do. They're constantly eating bugs, 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 bugs. And they don't really oftentimes get a rodent or a snake or a lizard or, or a rabbit or, 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 you know, something, or something like yeah. that. And so, um, so give them a lot of variety. But the, the socialization part is going to be your most difficult challenge. Uh, it can be done. It can be done, but you have to work very hard at it. Uh, Shane says, thank you again for my banana black pastel. Best oh. snake I've ever owned. He oh, loves his home and awesome. eats right out of my hand. Banger snake, too. Thanks, Shane. Do you know if it's that's, that's one of the real, real purple ones, yeah, right? It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's you're one lucky, of my dude. Favorites. Yeah, no, I, I love them. They're so beautiful. Thank you for the support, too, with it. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, man. Caleb says, thanks for the tip. All right, man. Anytime, Appreciate brother. You. Anytime, dude. I'm here for you. Uh, and then Chelsea threw three dollars for Drogo snacks. Ah, Drogo snacks. We need it. That dang thing costs us a fortune. Uh, <laughs> that dang, that dang <laughs> one, furry one day, turkey. One one day he's gonna make us some money. Yeah, right dude, now that thing's just costing so, us money. He's but, uh, so fucking. But funny. we love him. We, you know, I, I don't care if he'll ever make us money. I mean, I, it's it's it been a dream to have him. And uh, dude, I, I you'll see footage. Guy. I was editing it just before yep. from when we did like the piece with Lori when she was doing the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. you'll see it. I put I point the camera up, and Drogo oh, with, has with his tongue out all the. Yeah. Way with yawning. I love it when he yawns, man. It's so the cutest cute. thing in the world. Uh, Roberta said, Happy New Year to you both. I have been spraying Dexter, her ball python, mm -hmm. cage down regularly and have it as covered as possible. Uh, hopefully it helps. Okay, good. Okay, we talked about that last yeah. week. Yeah, we talked about that last week. So uh, thank you. I, I think it will. I, it will help. It, it, it's not a matter of if. Yeah. It's a matter of if you do it right, it will help 1,000%. Yeah. That's the biggest thing yeah. always. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth said, Happy New Year, guys. Sending much love and big hugs. Really appreciate what you bring to the hobby. Well, thank you so Such much. I mean, we, we keep trying and... and um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I love this hobby. I love the animals. I love everything we do so much. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it defines who I am. You know, I mean, there, it, I don't do this. Um, there's a lot of easier ways to make a lot of Yeah, living. dude, way and easier the, the, for the, sure. The grind is so real. And, and I always tell people, you know, um, you know, you know, we could probably, you know, liquidate all of our assets, so to speak. And, and we'd never have to worry about money again, you know. I mean, we're, you know, so it's not like it's a work money, of passion. Yeah, the money isn't what motivates me. Is what I'm saying is that you know it's uh, and I've said this about the reptarium, you know, and it's like if someone came and offered me ten million dollars, I wouldn't even blink an eye to tell them no. You know, what I mean, if they offered me a hundred million, I probably would say no. I mean, I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, it, this this is what I love. This is what I want to do the rest of my life, and. And I, I pray to God that when I'm 75 years old, I'm still, whether it's here at this reptarium or wherever a reptarium is, you know, if we go bigger or do whatever, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm still checking in every single day. And do I think I'll be daily vlogging? Probably not. Uh, but uh, but <laughs> well, you uh, never know. But you, you never, know, you, you never, never fucking know. know. I can tell you this much. I've been reading a, 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 a book recently. Um, it's actually, uh, uh, let me get to it real quick. I'm yeah, take your time. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been, it's actually been listening to it. It's called uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And, uh, and it just talks about how, uh, you know, I think it's really important to always stimulate your brain, you know, to always keep yourself going um, without overloading, you know. Now, yeah. interestingly enough, successful people try to, purge their self of things that don't matter you know they, they they want their brain to be taken up by the things that are the most important and, yeah and try to get rid of the things that are not important uh and simplify their their brain things but at the same time you want to train your brain you know a a, a an, an active brain is a healthy brain a dormant brain is a a dying brain um so my right. point is is that i want to work the rest of my life yeah I don't want to ever die. I mean, I, I know so many people that uh, my relatives and stuff like that, and I'm sure you guys know the same 
same thing, is that, you know, they get to a point, they stop doing stuff, they don't stop mentally challenging themselves, and, and, and they turn to mush, yeah. you know, and, and their Quickly whole life, too. yeah, their whole life, they were this witty, sharp, you know, fast thinking, and then six months later, they're, you know, eating pudding out of a fucking, you know, <laughs> what, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it happens quick, and I don't ever want to do that, so it, I know that was a little bit of a rant. Dude, yes, it's all good. You know, I, yes, I, I, I appreciate it, but you'll, you'll be, you know, I pray you guys will be putting up with me for a long time, and if I have any concern in life is just that you guys will stop wanting to listen to my dribble oh ain't it gonna happen baby uh jay said uh just love and gave a thumbs up appreciate you man hey thanks man i appreciate you uh justin says hey bro over here in somalia oh, i no. had to delete my ig for opsec reasons mm. what do you know what that is i don't know what that is uh, i could look it up though so jason is a, a a really good dude man he's he came did a tour with us um and yeah, he does some crazy shit, man. So he's stay safe over there, brother, man. I, I mean, you're he's he's always in this shit, man. This is a guy that I mean, he says he sends me. He was sending me some shit on IG, just like you know, just like <laughs> just fuck, man. This yeah. guy, he's a, he's he's the real life GI Joe, man. Oh, for real? He said yeah. he's coming to Utica in April. I'll email yeah. you my number. It's wild here. Yeah, it's awesome, brother. Good I luck out there, man. man. Stay safe. We'll see you in April. We'll hang out. We'll go play. He wants. I think he said we we're gonna like play paintball at one point. Oh, fuck, please. Yeah, fuck that dude i'm no, not i'll I'm not play going out and playing paintball with this gi joe dude i'm not playing paintball with this dude man he, i'm gonna he, couple he shots shoot in, me dude. in the eyeball man <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, but uh uh it's like the time i go-kart raced a nascar driver that yeah i got left in the that, that, didn't, that didn't end that well either i know oh, i dude. know when i'm i'm beat but uh but we'll hang out and do some fun stuff i promise you brother you for be sure safe out there man christine uh her message is retracted for some reason i don't oh. know if she meant to do that but well if uh, you did just yeah just just put it in the bottom Christine's always great to us she's she's amazing and, and just put it you don't have to super chat it just yeah, yeah just at checking in i'll yeah, see it yeah we'll see it so. uh nicole said did you see the two-bodied two-headed beardy on facebook i did not see, see that. i think That's i seen it recently really too. it was two-bodied and two yeah it was almost, i think it split at like the middle of the abdomen so like it had like the back legs i think were the same let me see I think this might be if it's the one I'm thinking of. It's one that I've, I was was. A I think bit it's old. one that you've it's, seen. It's probably been around for a while. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's been around for a bit. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, yeah. Yeah, I, don't I think it just it. resurfaced recently. There was actually a two-headed bearded dragon that did live. That's I mean, it wasn't crazy. A, it was an adult. It was a complete adult. You see well, this, this one? one? This one's wild. Yeah, that Dude. one's wild. one head and two oh, bodies. That is a cool I've never seen picture, that one. too. Like, yeah, they're, they're, like, hugging. That's yeah, weird. I've never seen that one at all. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the, at the Texas show, Arlington, Texas, about five, six years ago, someone came up and had a full-grown, like, flaming hot Cheeto, you know, red, no. bearded, with two heads, and it was a full-grown adult. And uh, I tried to buy it, but it was like, I mean, this was a herb fucking baby yeah you know? i mean and, for sure yeah, yeah so i mean I, I think just like i would turn down 100 mil for the reptarium i think she would have turned down 10 mil for that bearded dragon yeah you know? easy and, and it certainly wasn't worth that so uh I, I immediately was like hey would you sell that and she was like nope no, this is my baby and i was like i just left it i didn't even try to pry yeah you could um, tell um yeah. for real uh through three dollars just for love thumbs up thank you so much state 48 came back and said thanks for the support brian we'll be doing some water turtle morphs as well oh cool uh, but i agree thanks for the advice i will hook you up when i produce babies i'll keep grinding youtube i love it oh that's awesome man that's I, I really appreciate you and uh, i can't wait to see what you produce like i said i definitely want to get one i've loved them forever you know i've seen them years ago uh and i had an opportunity to buy some like yearlings that were you know well started so once they're at that stage they're goal yeah i mean once they get past that baby stage they, they're they're not they're rocking um at the albino sulcata I, I was talking about uh and, and um you know i, I wish i would have bought those bigger ones you know again not yeah i mean not that i need more bigger tortoises <laughs> but but i you know speedy probably needs a friend <laughs> speedy's so funny oh dude. my god i love that he story. cracks me up every day bro yeah, yeah you guys got you guys just don't understand like today was another day that i swear to gosh it's like a dog i mean he listens you can say come here get in here turn around go do this and he'll do what you tell him I and mean, he also and, like loves human yeah, he attention because yeah, he'll come yeah. to you like oh, if we're yeah. sitting down he just comes and just sits and like oh yeah what you doing yep i walked into the back room uh <laughs> just before the podcast you know about a half hour before and he was he was you know sitting there like a tortoise would and as soon as i walked up he just like Popped up, looked at me, had his head up in the air, like looking, came rock right over to me. Really cool animals, man. I mean, just uh, a pleasure to work with. But they are tanks, man. They yeah, tanks. yeah, they will yeah. destroy everything. Yes. Uh, Joe came back. He, I think he didn't know if I seen his super chat. So it says, uh, it's a Nile monitor, more specifically an ornate Nile monitor. 
Um, could you shed light on the differences between subspecies of Niles? Do you know? Um, I don't know much yeah, about it's any just of that a, it's literally just about the locality, you know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, but they're, they're really, really similar. I mean, you know, it's one of those That's things where when too. you t- get into taxonomy, you have, you know, what they call lumpers and, 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 and you know, people that separate, you know, yeah. um, in, in the, the, the subspecies of Nilocus, you could probably say that they could really all be the same. You know, uh, there's not just finding in a different area, they're a little bit different color, a little bit different pattern. Um, but you don't have any, you know, really radical differences in that. So the ornates are a little prettier, um, a little more yellows and a little bit more spotting, a little more diverse spotting as adults. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's gonna it's a challenge. I mean, it really is. It really is. But uh, but don't give up. I mean, I, I just talked to someone recently that had a group of Niles. I think they said they had like six or seven adult Nile monitors that they were breeding that were all dog tame. Wow, that's dog awesome. tame. And and uh, so that as a matter of fact, he he came and said that he wanted to work our Nile project if we produced. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and I was you know and and he had we went back and forth with messages and he said, hey, I I've, I've been working with Niles. I have six or seven sub adult and adults that are all dog tame just as tame as elvis the water monitor and um so i had told him that i said hey let's not get ahead of ourselves but when we produce eggs and we have babies yeah i'd love to bring maybe a guy like that on to be exclusively involved because i mean if i was going to work that nile project the albino slash melanistic you know potentially you know double head snows um you know it, it's probably going to i you know i know I've, it's i've crazy. thought about this with monitors like Right now we have, you know, just that's our breeding group, right? That's just that too. But but we also have a female Argus monitor. Obviously, you know, I'd like to get into some other monitors. And I, and I thought about, like, that may be one of the things I'd like to really start to focus on in the future is breeding some monitor lizards. But in order to do that, I'm going to probably need almost like a separate facility just yeah. for monitors um, if I want to be successful with it. But I do think, I told Kevin McCurley this, that I think that Kevin should focus on, wa- on water monitors. Well, all monitors, you know, is, is croc monitors and everything else too. Uh, he's got Argus as well. Um, but I think Kevin's really good at monitors. And I think that if I were him, I would put more focus on monitors and less focus on ball pythons and other, yeah. you know, uh, lead that uh, sector. Know, stuff. Yeah. Because, sure. cause I mean, he's already kind of leading that sector. He knows how to do it. He's got adults. He's got all these cool mutations. He should, if he put all, not all his focus, but 80% of his focus on monitor lizards, I think he would be way better off than trying to be spread. So diverse. And that goes back to what I was talking about earlier about diversification as opposed to being very laser focused. Sometimes you want to be more laser focused. And if I had, if I had the colony of monitors that Kevin had, yeah. I probably wouldn't be keeping anything else but that. Yeah, except, I mean, except the no reptarium clue. stuff, you know, yeah. from, from the breeding group. So, yeah, he's got crazy stuff over yeah. there. Yeah. Um, Christine came back, so I guess maybe she did come back and uh, said, "Happy New Year, Brian and Jay. I'm looking forward to seeing what 2021 brings for you guys." Me too. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thank sorry that we missed your first one. Um, and I'm looking forward to, and hopefully we'll get out to the East Coast and see you in person here sometime this year coming up. Uh, keep Where's me, she at? Uh, she's out. You know, I don't know exactly. I think it's she's in the the kind of. She's always at the um, uh, uh, White Plains Shore. She's close to the okay, White Plains okay, Shore. Okay, okay, okay. So somewhere in that area, I don't know exactly the state that she's in. I'm sorry, but uh, but that East Coast, you know, New York slash New Jersey slash yeah. Baltimore, Jersey, you know, stuff like that area. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, also, when you have some killer sambos, please, 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 please let us get some of those badasses. She produ- she produces great Kenyan, so I'd I'd like to get some more of her stuff. Hell yeah, Bob threw a dollar for or a euro actually. Um, and just message retracted. So sorry about that, Bobby. Hey, Bob. Thank you. Uh, Jay's in the, Jason's Jason, in the house. What's up, man? He said a uh, happy new year, Brian and Jay. Yeah. Thank happy you, new year, brother. Yeah. I just talked to him. I'm going to probably go on his podcast well, some, be cool. sometime in February. I, I told him today that I think it was like February 6th. Uh, I'll let everyone know more about that when it gets closer. But uh, I just told him that, that, you know, Jay, as you know, my life is so hard to predict what five weeks from now is going to oh look God, like. Oh, my God, yeah. But, uh, but, you know, if things don't change and so on like that. We do have a couple things coming up in February. Uh, weirdly enough, I, I, I know we want to go down to Florida in February for sure. I think that'll be maybe more middle of February. Yeah. Um, that would get down to there. I want to let some things calm down a little bit. For sure, you know, for with, sure. With the virus and vaccine Please. and all that type of stuff. But I think by hopefully by February, we can feel comfortable enough to get down there. 
Uh, and then um, you were going to say oddly enough. Uh, well, weirdly enough, I was Noah's big basketball guy. You yeah, know? yeah. And you guys, if you guys don't know, obviously my relationship with my son and and daughter, for that matter, are, mean everything to me. You know, I mean it's it's more than you know anything. And so I, I don't really care about sports that much. But we, me and Noah, were watching. Uh, Noah and I were watching uh, the Pistons game last night, and and you can't go to basketball games here in Detroit. And so just out of, I was like, you know, I wonder if you can go somewhere else. And and there was a, in February, they, they played down in Memphis, Tennessee. And, and I was thinking about maybe making a trip down to go see them. You know Memphis. what you should do? And don't tell Noah about this, but like maybe surprise them. If you do go down there, get in touch with uh, Theo. Theo moved to Nashville. Really? Yeah. So maybe you can get in touch with Ari and see if he can hook you up with Theo yeah, or Theo something. Bond, maybe you guys can go dope. hang out. Wow, I didn't realize that Theo moved out there. Yeah, maybe you of, get on his podcast. I tell you what, a lot of people are moving out of California, man. Almost Ooh. everybody that's important. People yeah. are, you know, and it's funny. I, I, I saw a Joe Rogan clip uh, a Rogan's? couple days ago, the Joe Rogan's yeah, uh, yeah. clip uh, a couple days ago where he was talking about how, um, you know, just it, it's, you know, never in the history of America has the government done what it's done where, where they're shutting people down saying you can't run a business but you can run a business you can't go to this you can't do this you can't do this and and and, and the person that he had on it was someone i didn't i'd never heard of before but it had said that he said yeah he goes i come to texas and it's almost like i'm on vacation yeah and then i go back to california it's almost like i'm back in boarding school <laughs> you know what i mean crazy? like like it's like it, it, it is like you're being punished when you go back to california and it's very similar here in michigan quite frankly you know i mean we're we're so locked down uh, and i don't know what's right or what's wrong i'm not trying to argue the no but it's just the fact right is wrong, we but, are very locked down regardless yeah it's very yeah. weird how you can go to certain parts of the country and it's I mean, I tell you what, Jay, I, I follow a lot of people on Instagram <laughs> and there are so many of my friends on Instagram that are posting, especially around the holiday of like them being in bars, packed bars with not, not a mask to be seen and in like parties and, and like all these like social events. I mean, you know, our buddy Joshua, uh, uh, that wrote the, the egg song, he yeah, just, yeah. he just played a gig. He just played a, isn't that the crazy? First live gig, you know? And, 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 and I've seen uh, people on Instagram, like being at, 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 at bars where with live acts and, and it's just so foreign to us up here in Michigan. Cause since March we've had nothing like that here in Michigan. I mean, it's been like so crazy here. I mean, you can't, you know, most of the, since March, the vast majority of the time we could, we didn't even have restaurants, you know, and, and, and now we have carry out of course, but we don't have, you can't go to a restaurant. You can't go to a bar. You can't go to hardly anything. So, um, so that's what, that's what the, the Rogans was talking about was that just how it's bizarre. And, and so I, I'm kind of, Part of me is like looking forward to going to South Florida because, again, all my friends in South Florida, I mean, I haven't seen Chandler, Tyler, any of those guys with Paul Cafaro. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could go a what? This. A I, mask? I, I haven't seen one picture with them with a mask. Yeah, I, I don't unless know it was ho- not even Halloween, bro. Yeah, yeah, not even <laughs> Halloween. They were not a mask. And that's not ba- a bash against them. No. It's just the way their life is down there. And so part of me is like, man, I can't wait to go. But on the other side, I want to be responsible. You know, yeah. and I've been responsible since March. And I think and, everyone, um, you know, so. I think every, you know, pretty, you know, right grounded person is mm-hmm. probably in the same boat where it's yeah. like we all know we want to get back to everything yeah. but we want to be responsible yeah and know? i think there's also the optics i think that i don't take lightly the fact that i've got a decent following online and i don't want to put out content that would make people think that i'm doing things that they should not you know I, or I that they should go and do yeah. those things too yeah. yeah and like i said we can argue all day long whether or not a, a piece of cloth like this piece of cloth is protecting us uh, we could argue that all day long, but I don't want to get into that topic. The point is, is that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to going, but I want it to be at a time when I don't feel like I'm breaking the rules or, yeah. ex, uh, ex, you know. And, like and when I, we went on our last trip, it was like, like it wasn't until we came back that things started getting crazy. Right, yeah. Because yeah, on yeah. our way there, it was like the lowest it was. Yeah, you know? and, and most of the states that we visited were at super, like Wyoming and, yeah, and, and super Idaho open. and, and my, uh, Montana. Not only were they open, but there were no cases there. At I mean, all, it was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. South Dakota was like, you know, where Florida is obviously a bigger. Beast, yeah, yeah. Florida and California are getting crushed. And I don't know that I want to go there and party. You know what I mean? But anyways, point is, is that uh, we have a couple trips coming up and um, 
I, yeah, getting getting with Theo would be pretty dope. Man. Yeah, and the, how, how crazy is it that the one time Noah's in the chat, I go, don't tell Noah we should get... Dude, Noah's been here the Noah's whole time. Noah's here? Ah, shit. He said no days off, It's dude. so funny because uh, I was talking to Noah about... Uh, I, I was thinking about surprising him with the, uh, the the Memphis thing now that's ruined. Yeah, I can you believe Damn, that? You, the Noah, one he's time. Never, he's never watched I've never podcast. seen him in this chat room, well, dude, ever. Well, Thanks, Noah. Know. Yeah, well, you guys know. Uh, Martin said, uh, Happy New Year's. My breeder males went off food. Not sure to be happy or mad. Saving my mo uh, me money, I guess. LOL. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I've always said that when breeder males go off of food, there's a ticking time bomb there, you know. And, and what I mean by that is that as soon as they're off of food, they are now expending energy without gaining energy. Yeah, no right? calories. So uh, lots of calories going out, no calories coming in. And depending on the size, the gram weight of your males, they only have... They now have a shelf life of maybe 10, 12 weeks of breeding. If you push it beyond that without them going back onto food, you're going to start to jeopardize their life. So, yeah. so just keep that in mind, you know, like see if you can't get them onto food. See if there's some way you can get them. Maybe if they're eating rats, give them a mouse. If they're not going to take a mouse or a rat, try an ASF, you know, something like that. Try to get some nutrients into them because that's going to extend your breeding season. Uh, and that's something you want to do. I mean, right now, I'll give you an example. We, we fed this last week. We fed about... Uh, 80 males that were breeding, uh, and I think 79 of the 88. So, so wow. that's, but, but I guarantee you that a, a month and a half from now, maybe uh, 50 of those 80 males will eat. And then those 30 males will be tagged as in like, okay, you have 10 to 12 weeks of breeding left and then you shelf and I'm yep. not going to breed you anymore. So just keep that in mind. Uh, tag exotic says, have you ever considered adding assassin bugs or giant beetles to the reptarium? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's something that we want to do more of. I uh, agree. Um, you know, we have, you know, the, the, the biggest species of Madagascar and hissing cockroaches right now that get like three plus inches long. So sick. Um, and, and we have some, some horn beetle, uh, larva right now. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I'd love to add, add some more, more creepy crawlies because they're super dope and people love them. I mean, they're just so popular. Um, little bogus. Says, uh, Happy New Year from Nebraska. Any resolutions for 2021? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, you know, it's like I've told everyone, I don't necessarily believe in resolutions on New Year's per se. I think it's a great symbolic day to start anew, right? We can say, uh, okay, today is the day we can start anew. It's a great way. But I, I make resolutions every day of the year, yeah, you know? Same. So I'm constantly changing, you know? Uh, and, and I think that my resolution on January 1st was the same resolution that I had on uh, uh, September 1st. And, and that was to find, not find, uh, uh, appreciate the things around me more and be more happy with the things that I have. Live more in the moment. Um, you know, be at more at peace with life and find joy. Because uh, again, I'm going to talk in a little bit about anxiety. And, uh, and, and when you go through what I went through this year, uh, just unbelievably oppressive anxiety. And by the way, I think last time I said, I, I think it may have been on a checking in podcast. Mm. I said something like, you couldn't get worse than I was and not be above ground. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I think someone like sent me a message. And, and this is no, if, if it was you, I'm, I'm not calling you out. Someone said something like, you know, don't ever say that you can't be worse than you because, you know, I've been blah, 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 blah. And, and, and it's number, not a one, number one, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that there's no one in the world that's ever been worse than me. What I was trying to say is that I was so bad that probably 99 out of a hundred people that were as bad as me would have killed themselves. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, it took unbelievable will to not kill myself, uh, during that five month window, not every day, but, but many days of that five months. Uh, and and the, the thing you have to remember is for that five months, there was never a break, one minute of a good time. You yeah. know, there was terrible times and really bad times. Yep. There was never good times, medium times, anything like that. But ultimately over a course of time, and I'll talk more about this. I, I don't want to get off reptiles first, uh, but you know, as, as we go, I'll talk more about this uh, later on in the podcast is that, um, you know, through the work that I did, those uh, terrible and really bad turned into moderately bad, turned into occasionally bad, turned into, you know, sometimes normal, Medium, you know, yeah. and then slowly turned into where it flipped from being b feeling terrible all the time with very little breaks of good times to now being good times mainly and very little times of bad times. Um, and, and I'll talk more about that later, but let's not get into that yet. Uh, Lisa said, happy new year. Hoping 2021 means business can go back to normal. 
A big thank you for daily vlogs in 2020. It saved me from going insane with anxiety. <laughs> Sending love from far away. Well, thank you so much. It's and, been uh, received. Yes, and it's, um, you know, 2020 was good. It's, again, I've told everyone this, you know, don't expect 2021 to just snap and be great. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to take time. Obviously, you know, we won't get too, too deep into it, but, you know, the, the vaccine race has been horrible. Um, <laughs> the government has dropped the ball like you cannot believe. Like Elon Man uh, in the like, Super I mean, Bowl. Yeah, like anyone that did as bad of a job as they did in December uh, would be fired right yeah, now. Yeah, at a normal and, job, and, and, you would and, not and, have yeah. a job. Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> It's always shocking to me when, you know, you, you basically have had 10 months to figure something out and, and you act like you never even thought about it. Like, oh, wait a second, what, what, what are we supposed to do again? I mean, you would have thought that from day one, they were planning on how to execute. And obviously, uh, and that, that comes right from the top all the way down. Um, and, 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 and there's, don't get me wrong. It's unbelievable. The logistics that has to happen to make this happen. But listen, we can do it if we put our mind to yeah. it. And Amazon right now, could do it if it was yeah. toilet paper. Well, guaranteed. this is a, to be totally honest with you. I think that the best way the government could have done, to be totally honest with you, and some people will disagree with me on this, um, because it would have made someone rich. But I think that they should have went to an Amazon. Yeah, got or a contract with Amazon. And said, you do this. Oh yeah. And if you do this, you are going to make billions of dollars by doing it. I agree with but you. You figure and private industry would have made it happen. Yeah. And this and, is the thing that like, you know, I, I'm a very all over the place person, but it's one of the things with like a libertarian person I've always agreed with is like, I get that private companies will do things in a better fashion. You yeah. know what I mean? Like well, DMV yeah. is a good example of what yeah. government does, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. The government typically does not deliver well on things like this. They have no uh, reason to. They're, they're way behind the gun, you know, and, and when you're talking about them saying they're going to jab 20 million people and they literally do less than 3 million uh, in the same timeline, that is a, I mean, that's an 85% miss. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so we you got a 15 you know, on your test. Yeah. Think you, did, about that, you did bad. You, know? you did bad. And, and do I think it's going to get better? I absolutely do think it's going to get better, but it's going to take time. And it's very disappointing because I thought that by March, people like me might get an opportunity. I think now we're looking at maybe June before someone like me gets an opportunity to get a vaccine. Um, that's disappointing because that's another two or three months that, that we're going to have to wait. That shouldn't have to be if they would have just done what they were supposed to do. That being said, 2021 will be great. It will. I am telling you, we are going to sit next year at some point, and we are going to be so grateful for every single day. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be great. And and obviously, anyone that watched the vlog sees that I, um, you know, I've I, we, we myself and Jay, that's both kind of committed to to doing daily vlogs. Uh, that doesn't mean that that's not going to change through the year, but um, but most likely we'll be here every day for you guys. And uh, I'm still looking forward to it. Really, the only thing that could change that I'm going to be totally honest with you is our viewership. Yeah. If, if for some reason the channel spirals to the point where it doesn't become worth doing daily, uh, then we'll have to change it up, you know, and um, let's hope that doesn't happen. You know, the ebbs and flows of YouTube's happen. Yeah. We are in a downtrend right now. I mean, we had a great 2020, the end of the year tanked. Uh, just really December was yeah. one of, was the worst month of the year for us. Um, but that happens. When I look back on last December, it was very similar. Yeah. Um, we we're similar numbers. Uh, so hopefully we'll rebound January. We rebounded last year in February, March, of course, we're different because of the COVID thing and stuff like that. March typically isn't the best year or month, month of the year, yeah. but it was great last year because everyone was stuck home and found us on YouTube. So, uh, that'll dictate things, right? Yeah. So share those you know? videos, like it, <laughs> yeah. comment, subscribe, you know, yeah, to do yeah. your part. You're yeah, a part of no. the community. Well, know? it is, you guys are a big part of it. And if you guys, uh, support not you know not just that they support the podcast everything you know i mean that's the way this this works yep. I, can, I can't make I, i'm not doing it for just just for me i mean i <laughs> yeah, love doing it i love doing it but obviously if it doesn't if it doesn't make sense i can't do it so anyways hopefully we'll be around for 365 days this year i plan on it i don't expect to be anything different i think we will um, be and i think we will be so yeah uh jacob says i know this is a bit off topic but any more interest in still doing the mobile snake breeding game yeah, interest, I, yeah. I, I mean, interest, yeah. It, it was really a debacle um, because we just didn't have. I mean, the guys that worked on that project with me were really great guys. They really were. I just don't think that they had the experience or knowledge to make it happen. I think a, a, a mobile uh, snake breeding game that was done properly would be a very successful game, and it'd be something I would love to get behind. Uh, this is the thing. I would either have to partner up with with a company that really knew what they were doing. And, and, and we're able to, to, to 
get my vision for it and execute it into what I think could be successful, or I would have to pay. It would cost about a hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a big risk. And, and by the way, a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and take between twelve and eighteen months to develop. So, uh, so you would be putting out a lot of money and, and not tying it up for a long with, time with no chance of making money for at least. 12 to 18 months. And no guarantee uh, of making and, anything and then, at all. And then it could completely tank or yeah. maybe someone else comes out with something in that, that time frame that's exactly the same and then you end up eating Well, I didn't money. even think of that. That would be terrible. You know, so, I mean, there could be, you know, three games being produced right now that we don't know about. Yeah, and you, you, know, so. you two months into your development, yeah. it could come out that, oh, yeah. there's one and it's a yeah. good one, you know? Yeah, and, and so, you know, I would love to do it. I think that there's a de there could be a demand for it if it's done right. Uh, it's something that's still on my chalkboard, you know, it's still something on my chalkboard, but it's, uh, you know, right now I'm trying to, to, uh, diversify in areas that make the most sense. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that, so, so when you get into, um, uh, you know, games in general, they, they're either like a failure, moderately successful or hugely successful. Yeah. Um, Flappy Bird versus yeah, you know, any yeah, well, yeah, game. yeah. I mean, when, yeah, very few are the big, big, big yeah. ones. But there's certainly, I mean, you could invest one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and make you know a million dollars in a year easily if 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 it hits even moderately. Not a giant. I mean, Angry Birds made hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars, um, uh, but a moderately successful game could easily make a million dollars um, return. Uh, if it's moderately successful, if it's not successful at all, you, you lost your money. And, yeah. and, and my, I'm at this point now where, you know, sticking it in some other investments makes more sense right now. Uh, that doesn't mean if the right person didn't say, hey, man, I want to jump in on this. This is my credentials. We can do this. And we split the money 50 50. Uh, I, I would probably jump on that in a heartbeat. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Bob says, and I'm going to gra grammatically fix this, I think. So it says, um, sometimes you have animals free roam your place. Do they react to one another? So we never yeah, have yeah. two separate animals that free roam no, at the no, same no. time. Uh, but we, you know, when we do have free roaming animals, they do seem to be very curious about the other animals in the in and the, vice versa, the, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. the animals in the cages, absolutely. But not from a like aggressive standpoint whatsoever. But yeah, we don't ever let like Elvis and and Abasuku out at the same time or something like that. They they're always separate, you know, because because we don't know how they're going to react with one another. We don't want to take any chances. Yeah, and you don't want to be in the middle of two giant monitors no. fighting. No, for no, sure. No, 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 definitely. <laughs> Jonathan said, uh, have you uh, heard anything about the Tatanaboa snake that lived 34 million years ago, weighed uh, over two tons and said to be in the boa constrictor family? Hmm. Have I ever heard that? Tatanaboa? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, 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 yeah, I've read a lot about Titanoboas. Um, they're amazing. I mean, you know, I, I've been asked that a bunch of times, would I keep them if they were still around? And I, of course, said 1,000% oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Titanoboas would be something else. And I, I again, you know, I, I, I said this the other day, you know, when you get Lucy out or even Ivy now that is getting so large, which she is it's crazy how big so she's big getting. Too. It's I've never seen growth like this on any no. snake. I mean, anacondas no. are, are one of a kind with their growth. Um, but you just really, even those animals that are 20 foot, you think like, this should not be on this earth. I know. You know what I mean? It is like a dinosaur. I mean, there's a 20 foot snake. I mean, it's insane. Um, so to imagine a titanoboa, that would be three times that size is got to be ridiculous, you know. Could you imagine? And uh, I mean, I just I would love to see one. I mean, if if it, you know, I mean, I was just watching something the other night about how they 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 really feel within the next two to three years they'll be able to resurrect woolly mammoths, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. They they have they already have the full strain of DNA. Basically, what they did was they took Asiatic elephants and they 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 took about that was about twenty percent of the Asiatic elephants DNA and and, and intertwined it with eighty percent of of woolly the, mammoth. the woolly mammoth <sighs> DNA. And they literally have completely full strands of DNA that they all they have to do is basically now inseminate. An, an elephant and, and they'll have a woolly mammoth. But I think the technology just isn't quite there. They said within two years, they think they could do that. So if, if one day, and, and then now you get into a whole nother game, you know, <laughs> of like, is it ethical? And I don't, I don't, nature, I, I nature don't, don't got much ethics. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know I mean? It's, it, you could definitely argue woolly mammoth. Probably you could probably say, yeah, you know, 
it's, it's just a big elephant with with hair, you know. And it wasn't um, around that long ago, yeah, to be honest but, with but, you. Yeah, but, you know, you start getting into, you know, should we bring a raptor back or yes, a T-Rex back? Dude. I mean, <laughs> me as an animal guy says, hell yeah, I want to see one of these animals in person. Uh, but but we also know we've we've all seen the movie, you know, <laughs> and it probably doesn't end There's well. There's already but, a Spinosaurus over at fucking Gatorland. Yeah, so right. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, Gatorland has a Spinosaurus. Go check but, it uh, out. Um, but I think that if, if, if they ever brought back a Titanoboa, I would... I'd be the first in line to to be applying to take care of it. So yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Peggy said, "Coming to the Reptarium tomorrow for wow. my birthday." Wow, happy birthday! Oh, Peggy. We're not gonna be sorry, here. we're closed oh, tomorrow. Man, sorry, sorry. No, it's not kidding. Uh, happy birthday! We'll be here. I'll be here. Uh, I she, will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. It'll be a blast. She said it was. The, it's the perfect gift for her anxiety. Happy New Year tomorrow, to you all. So maybe awesome. you guys can do some bonding. You know? What I'm yeah, saying? absolutely. And like I said, hang in there, uh, Peggy, with me because we'll be talking about anxiety here uh, shortly, and that's when uh, our 500 viewers will turn into 150. That's right. Because uh, people will be like. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I seriously right. hope that you guys will stick around for the talk. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to be deep in a way, but I just want to talk about, you know, how you uh, mentally go through it. And it won't be real long. I mean, I want to talk about reptiles mainly, but, um, but I hope you guys will stick around for it. I do because too. I think it's important. Uh, Jose said, thanks for the positivity coming out of COVID. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, what else can you do? You know what I mean? That's right, dude. All you can do I is mean, be positive. I mean, strangely enough, it's, it's. You know, I've went, I've ran the gamut when it comes to the virus and, and, and the virus was a huge, I'll talk about this with anxiety was a huge trigger for me. And really a lot of people with anxiety, uh, have, have different triggers, right? My trigger is lack of control, um, lack of the unknown uncertainty, all these things. And you can't get less control and less uncertainty than a pandemic, <laughs> uh, that is global. And, uh, and, 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 you know, when we are shut down, the world felt so oppressive, that uh, that's what threw me off the edge. Now I was dealing with some anxiety before that for the last couple of years, but uh, but that was the, the the straw that broke the camel's back. So, um, but but now I have a little bit of a different view on that. You know, the the fact that you've got to become comfortable with the uncomfortable and and and, and comfortable with the uncertainty of the future. And we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know for sure that this vaccine is going to take care of this. We do know there will be an end, no matter what, right? And even though now there's uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the, the fear mongering of the media, which, by the way, I don't watch the news, but I do catch some stuff on. I, I try to keep a little bit update because of YouTube and stuff like that. And sometimes my news feeds on, on Twitter or Instagram uh, show things. Sometimes I don't want to see them, to be totally honest with you. But it's also like, you know, kind of like you can't look away. You know, you, you see that headline. And you're like, oh, fuck, I got to look at yeah. this now. Because uh, if you don't look at it from an anxiety standpoint, it's I tell Lori this all the time because Lori will be like, you, if you see a headline, just don't read it. I say sometimes when you're an anxious person, if you don't look into that, your headline, now Thinks you're making everything. the worst. You're taking that headline, you're figuring it's the worst possible case. So sometimes knowing knowledge is better than not having knowledge. Ignorance is bliss. There's no doubt about it. But sometimes when you get that little. If you've already seen it, yeah. And the thing is, is that 99.9% of the time, the headline is way worse than they make it. Than it yeah, actually it's, is. It's, it's a clickbait, clickbait thing, just like yeah. everyone everyone does. That's a, the life we live in now. But the uh, uh, point is, is that, um, uh, you know, this latest fear mongering is this mutant, you know, this COVID mutant that is, yeah. oh my God, the new strain. Well, what you have to realize is that's good news. And, and you may think, what, Brian? It's it's more contagious. Why could that be good news? Because that's how viruses work. And they're right? typically less they, deadly, more right. contagious. Well, it yeah. is, and we've already known that this new strain is less severe. Yep. It, they've already proven it. There's less hospitalizations by a lot, by a factor of about 10. Uh, with the new strain. So yep. more people are going to get sick, more people are going to become immune, and less people are going to die with the new strain. Yep. Um, this is how viruses work their way out. The pandemic of uh, uh, the, the, the Spanish flu, there was no vaccine. It took over two years, uh, almost three years, about two and a half years for it to finally work its way through the system. Well, there was no hope for a vaccine because we didn't have the technology we have now, yep. right? And so, so we just had to live through it. And so we know... The same will happen for this, right? Yep. If if the vaccine didn't work, which we think it will, and I hope I'm very hopeful it will, um, we still will get to the end of this. Regardless, eventually. yeah. Yes, will more people die? Absolutely. Yes, will things suck? Absolutely. We would like us to end as quickly as possible, um, but we will get to the other side of yeah. this, and and that's that's the mentality that I've been getting is that you know, hey, listen, you know, uh, we, no you matter know, what, yeah. we're making it. You're going to make it so. through it. You know, I mean, I hope. 
I mean, you know, I, I mean, I know we as a as a, as a humanity yeah, are going to yeah, make it through. Yeah. Will each of us individually make it through? That that's you know that's unknown. But yeah, but, of course. But, but yeah, uh, Josh said you inspired me to start my reptile hobby slash business. My first clutch to be laid this year. My fascination started with Komodos, became related, mm-hmm. um, became of you. Thank you. Nice. I guess maybe you, uh, you know looked yeah. at Komodos and then eventually got to your channel. So well, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Komodos are uh, still a, a freaking obsession of mine like you can't believe you have no it's idea. A, probably not a day that goes by that i don't dream about komodo dragons being at the reptarium and, i literally and, thought and, about it yesterday because yeah, i'm like day, it's so because I, I same with the rock python like um because it is cool that we have so many monitors and and big snakes that we yeah. get to represent those animals yeah. you know and that's so cool to me yeah, and, and I think, you know, one day we'll make that happen, maybe sooner, maybe later. I've got a few leads on some things, um, but, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, many of the things that I'm trying to go down will hit a brick wall, you know, and, yeah. and, and won't go through, but uh, but it won't stop me, and and uh, I, I will one day own a Komodo dragon. I mean, it's, it's not a matter of when, it's just a matter of if. Or not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yes, uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, that way. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I love it. So thank you so much. And congratulations on your first clutch. That's going to be dope. Uh, Caleb said, sorry, got to go. I'll need to listen to it later. All right. Catch you later, good, man. Caleb. All right. Listen to you later, man. I'll still be here. I'll still, yeah, I'll, or I'll be waiting. Could, could you imagine? I just leave it live and then it's like, hey, Caleb. Caleb, <laughs> we're comes waiting in. for you. <laughs> we're not coming back. We're not leaving until Caleb is back. Autumn said, uh, January 1st, five members of my family tested positive, and now I can't go home for the sake of my health yeah. and job. The yeah. vlogs are keeping me sane. Well, I'm glad, and good luck. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck. You know, I mean, that's what happens. Actually, we had one of our employees today uh, reach out and say that he was at a— uh, and, and, you know, our crew has been really good about being kind of in a bubble, right? Yep. Um, and we don't, we don't wear masks around each other. And one of the things I told my crew early on is, remember, your actions are going to affect all of us. Yep. So be smart. And, and our crew has been extremely smart, and, and uh, this one person— um, you know, contacted us and said that he was around someone whose mother just tested positive. Tested positive, and he's asked me what to do, and I said, "You can't come to work." Yeah, you know, what I mean, period. You can't come to work. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, and, and he's like, "Well, my friend is going to get tested, and if he comes back negative," and I said, "You know, you need to quarantine for at least seven to ten days." Yeah. you know, because you know, even if if your your friend tests negative today, he may Could test positive negative, three yeah. days from now, and then you come in, and now you get everyone sick. So, so we have to take our you know our bumps, and we have to do what we have to do, and and it sucks, but uh, I, I pray that we'll get through this without having any outbreaks here yeah because it's all about being responsible Be responsible yeah. for everyone else too yeah. because that's like um you know like when the fu- um when the first started i got sick right yep. remember and yep. that was the first thing like as soon as i woke up i'm like i yep. got a call and like let's make this decision together yep. and yep. figure it out and that's what we yeah did. and the decision was stay home you know and get tested you got tested yep um, came back negative, thankfully, but even then you stayed home. You yeah. Know, you just, don't get anyone said, sick. Yeah. Cause we just said, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, you could come to work cause you don't have COVID, but then if we get sick, are we going to feel like we have COVID now we have to go get tested and blah, blah. I said, just stay home until you feel better. And it was the best thing for everybody. Yeah, for you know, sure. And, uh, and, and, and that's how you should reality. be. Yeah. And that's, you got to keep, you know, keep everyone in mind. And if you feel like shit or you're starting to feel sick and you go out, then you're an asshole. Yeah. You, yeah, I, at these times asshole. you need to be 100% yeah. real. Even like when I first called Brian, because I was, I had like a little bit of like a nasal drip and yeah. like a slightly sore throat, but you know, you're not stupid. You know, like, okay, I'm probably getting sick yeah. and I should call and figure it out. Yeah. So. And, it, and it worked out great and, and now no one else got sick and literally you, not you, another yeah, person. Yep. And, so. then, and yep. And you were, uh, you know, good to go a few days and then you were back in here and rolling like never. So, uh, Sabrina says sending love from Maine bought a be- uh, bought beautiful two month old sugar pastel female mm. paradox oh. from you. Oh, love nice. all that you do. That's, Damn, that's awesome. a banger. Yeah. They are beautiful. I was just looking at a bunch of ball pythons before, uh, we got here. <laughs> Where I was telling Jay, you know, we have, um, and, and okay. So I'm going to take a break from super chats. Yeah. Keep the super chats coming. You got it. I'm going to talk about a couple things. Then we're going to hit some super chats. Then I'm going to get into some anxiety talk, but first I want to hit a couple things. So I was, I was downstairs going through ball pythons. Uh, you know, it's funny, <laughs> you know, we probably have 
500 baby ball pythons not on the website right now that are available, you know, that are doing well, looking amazing, and they just haven't got up on the website. So we're going to work really hard on getting those animals up on the website in the next week, 10 days. Um, so keep an eye out. There's some bangers in there. I mean, there's some bangers in there uh, that are really beautiful. So I uh, can't wait to show you guys. I mean, we, I was telling Jay, we have like 50 pides, just normal pides that just aren't even on the website. And people are always like, oh, oh you're out of pies. When are you going to have pies? I'm like, I got a rack full of pies. <laughs> but um, a lot of cool stuff there. But uh, but let's get into really quick before we move on to I'll grab some more super chats. So feel free to keep them coming. We'll get to every super chat, I promise you. Uh, and, and then we'll just slip in some anxiety talk. But I wanted to slip you one little piece of, of, of like kind of tip on breeding ball pythons and really breeding all snakes. And I've talked about this in the past a little bit, but I want to really, really push it to you guys. And this is something that, again, a lot of people probably don't want to talk about or, or tell because it's such an important part of success. And that's food cycle. Okay. So a lot of times when people think of breeding snakes, uh, they think of weather cycle, you know, getting things cooler, maybe humidity cycle, uh, all these other things. But the fact is, is that food cycle is the number one most important thing you can do when you're breeding snakes. And we're all reptiles. The same thing goes for like, say, say monitor lizards are the same way is that you start upping the food when you want them to ovulate, right? And start producing follicle growth. Now, what you've got to think about this is just think about it from a purely you know, like ecological slash nature standpoint. If a female is not getting food, she is not only not going to have the calories to go into follicular growth, ovulation, ova positioning, or, or live babies or whatever the case may be, but also she's going to say, my babies are not going to thrive because there's not enough food, right? So from a, just a nature standpoint, mother nature standpoint, they're not going to produce, right? Now, if you start hitting the food to them, in particular in the beginning of the breeding season, so say you're breeding ball pythons, same thing goes for boas. I know boa cycles exactly the same. People that are successful breeding boas almost always food cycle, right? So what you do is during the off season, you feed like moderately. And then right at the beginning of the breeding season, let's say the end of October, early November with ball pythons, you go from feeding a moderate, just like maintained diet, you know, where they're like not thin, but not heavy. You don't want them to be heavy. You want them to be a little bit underweight. You start hammering them with food. You go from one rat a week to two rats to three rats to four rats. What I mean, to the point where literally they don't want to eat anymore, you know, whatever that takes without them regurgitating, right? You don't want to over, overfeed. But you start increasing that food. That is what causes follicular growth, which then ultimately, you know, throws off pheromones, which ultimately will cause males to start being interested in copulation. That copulation causes follicular growth again, and it's a cycle, right? So, so I don't cycle temperatures at all when it comes to pythons and boas. Uh, I do cycle with colubrids because colubrids go dormant and there's a whole thing about, you know, maybe spermatogenesis with males needing a certain temperature and so on like that. I'm not talking about males as much as I'm talking about females. When most boas and pythons, males don't need a cooling down in order to produce fertile sperm. Now that, now on the flip side, you don't want them to get hot either because you can kill sperm if you get too warm, right? So you don't want your hot spot to be too hot because you're going to have infertile eggs or, or, or stillborn babies. But food cycle is the number Number one thing. And uh, as a matter of fact, Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons, uh, he was here uh, before, COVID, well, right, you know, right when COVID was starting to happen. And he had mentioned to me, he was like, yeah, you know, I mean, I've been ultrasounding. It doesn't look like I'm going to have a very good year. And I pulled him aside and I said, dude, start hammering your females with food. I said, get home and feed them three times more than you usually feed them. And he's like, really? And he ended up having 80 something clutches of ball pythons. And he even told me that he said, I think I would have produced half of what I produced if I didn't start hammering with, with food. And so again, I'm sharing this information because number one, I want you to be successful with breeding snakes. If you, if that's what you want to do. Number two, I realize that even giving you this information, there will be a bunch <laughs> of you that won't do it I know. And, and you won't be it's successful unfortunate, yeah. uh, cause you gotta be consistent. You know, when you start to hammer them with food, you have to continue hammering them with food until they go off of food at 20 to 25 millimeter follicle growth. Right. But we have seen females that were hanging on to 15, 16 millimeter follicles, getting bred, but just not eating very well. And then all of a sudden that one day they start to eat and they, you know, you, you know, so maybe you've got a female that eats every other week, you know, eats and doesn't eat, then eats and doesn't eat. And then all of a sudden one week she just decides she wants to eat. 
and you feed her three, four, five rats, all of a sudden that 15 millimeters goes to 20 millimeters within four days. Yep. You know, now you've already pushed her into an ovulation or pushed her into a follicular growth state. So, so food cycle works that way. Same thing with, with reticulated pythons. As a matter of fact, Mike Wilbanks was the first person that talked to me about food cycle probably 15 wow, years really? ago. Yep. He was breeding reticulated pythons at the time. And he told me that he could actually produce reticulated pythons any month of the year he wanted. Any month, January through January, he could produce a reticulated python. All he had to do was go from kind of uh, uh, like light on the food, not starving, but get them a little bit thin and then start hammering them with food. And he Give said, them that contrast, didn't right? Didn't matter what month it was. And, and it got to the point where he was actually producing almost year round. Oh, he'd have like a colony that yeah. would produce yep. in the spring, yep. a colony for the fall. And whenever he wanted to. So and, sick. Uh, and it was all just about food cycle. And then he he started using that same uh, attitude towards ball pythons. As a matter of fact, Jeff Kelly from El Segundo uh, Pythons told me that he could get his retics to produce every nine months wow. through food cycle. So, so he did the same thing. He would get them to produce... Uh, you know, feed them a little bit, keep them on the some side. And instead of waiting maybe six months to start the cycle again, he would do it in three months and start the cycle again. And he said he was on average producing a reticulated python clutch every nine months. And it makes so much females. sense. Now, I think you could probably do the same thing with ball pythons. We do every 12 months, uh, but we could probably, if we wanted to cycle quicker, we could probably do that. To me, it just doesn't make any sense because I, you know, it's not that like- It takes I, four I, years to get an extra yeah, year of yeah, breeding. And, yeah. and, and it's not like, you know, I, if, if I were doing this- is my primary income like I used to, maybe I would start doing that again, but it doesn't really need to be that way. So, um, and you know, it's in just, I think it's so cool, right? Because typically animals are born in spring, right? Like that's typically a breeding season is right. around springtime. Yeah. And that's when a bunch of rabbits are going to be born. A bunch of squirrels are going to be born. Sure. And like in nature, that's where you're really going to see that food cycling actually happen. Like yeah. it's a real thing. So it's really cool to see. Yeah. I mean, just think about it from that standpoint. So it's, uh, it's it, you know, again, some years in the wild, uh, it's going to be cooler. Some years it's going to be hotter. Some years it's going to be wetter. Some years it's going to be drier. But there's still going to be a cycle that happens. How many animals you know? will be here and how yeah. many, what's the likelihood that they will all have offspring to feed mine? So right. it's yeah. cool. So it's just, I mean, that's probably the biggest tip that I can give you guys. Um, and if you follow that tip, you will you will see. I went from it's crazy 50 to 55% success rate to over 90%. Success rate just with by, huge just, clutches yeah, too. With, yeah, with that's the other thing. You're going to get bigger clutches because your females are going to be have more nutrition. I'd say like what average is like nine eggs yeah, at we, least. Yeah, 10, we, nine, pro 10 eggs? we probably averaged eight eggs because eight? we had some six and seven egg clutches, but then we had some ten, twelve egg clutches. I didn't do the math this year on the actual yeah. average, but certainly over eight, between eight and nine was probably our average clutch size for ball pythons, uh, which is is good. But that's again calories in, production out. I always talk about that. Same thing goes with colubrids. You just brumate them first, but when females come out of hibernation, you feed them two or three times more than you would feed them the when they were season. going into the yeah. hibernation. Uh, so food cycle is super important. So there you go. There's your tip of the day. Uh, let's jump some Boom. super chats. All right, cool. I got some on my phone. So All right, cool. Uh, Cerebral says, hey, guys, my girlfriend Emily and I love everything you guys do. I was wondering if she could get a shout out. She deals with anxiety, PTSD, and depression on a daily basis and can use a pick me up. Well, yeah, Emily, definitely, man, so, hang in there. And like I said, uh, uh, I hope Emily is listening. If it's not, please sh hear, uh, show her this because uh, here in a few, I'm going to talk about some anxiety and talk about how I've gotten through the majority of it and how, you know, there's still some lingering, you know, yeah. around. It's not like I'm perfect, uh, but but I, I, I know that the path that I'm on will get me to that perfect that I want to get to. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, we love uh, you. Hang yeah, in so, there. So Emily, you'll get there and listen to my words of, of wisdom because, uh, not that I'm some psychologist, uh, but I know what works and yeah. I know what you're going to need. So, uh, I'm, I'm about to throw some freaking knowledge on you here. Boom. In a minute. So, um, so <laughs> hang in there, you know, there's hope, there's hope. Uh, Roberta said, any chance of selling some of Nova's babies in the future? Yeah, I think next year we'll do that probably. You know, I think that we blew it this year. You know, uh, and what I mean by blew it, we we did a few things that 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 didn't work out this year. We did produce some, but we didn't produce nearly as many as we did and as many, nearly as many as we could. Uh, this next year, we're going to dial it in and, and we're going to, so we have them separated for the first time, yep. uh, which I think is the first thing to beefing Lilith up to the point where she can actually produce viable, great, 
good clutches. Um, and, and so that's the first thing. We'll, when we reintroduce them uh, in the spring, I think that we'll have probably March, I'm going to say we're going to reintroduce them. I think we'll have three clutches uh, big clutches. So I think that we'll, we'll be able to produce, you know, somewhere about 20, 25 babies this coming up here. And there's no way we're going to keep them all, you know, each year I keep one or two or something like that. So, so yeah, we'll definitely be selling some Nova and Lilith babies this coming up here. So hang tight. Sweet. Um, Scott said, what do you think about live videos as opposed to uploaded videos? My work schedule and collection have me so busy. Live is just easier for me. So, um, the way live works when it comes to YouTube in particular is that if you do live and then you do upload it at you know, like this channel, for instance, is, is a streaming channel. We don't ever upload videos that aren't yeah. live. Um, so, so the algorithm understands that what happens when you, you have a, a channel that you upload videos and then you go live, um, you, you, the algorithm gets confused. And oftentimes it hurts your, your algorithm on your uploading videos. So if you're going to be a channel that you just do live, then do live. You're fine. You're hundred percent fine, but don't mix the two channels together because it's going to be very confusing. You don't want to confuse the algorithm. You don't want to confuse your audience. Yeah. Um, and, and although some channels do this, I know channels that, that upload two videos a week and then go live once a week. Um, but I would imagine that, that those channels probably would do better if they didn't do live, even to the point where they may be better off to start a new channel. Just I was just going to say that. Cause if um, you look good example, uh, Joe Rogan, Logan, Paul, yeah. Dave Dobrik, they all do their podcasts live on different network, like on a different yeah, station, different you know? station. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to ruin your sheet. Yeah. It's, it's just not, not as good when it comes to the actual podcast you know, business side of, of the house. But, uh, um, but you know, uh, and then, then it's just a matter of how compelling your live is. Right. I mean, I'm not saying our live is compelling. I have no freaking clue if you guys, you know, how you guys <laughs> feel about it, but, but, uh, uh, that will determine yeah, the viewership. That, that will be determined in the viewership, you know, and hopefully, you know, it, it works out for us. But, um, but if you're, you know, I, I mean, I've seen some live videos where like people are like cooking spaghetti, uh, and they're animal people, you know, they're animal people. And then all of a sudden they throw a live on that. They're just, you know, and, and I don't know if that's a money grab or what that is, but, uh, but I'm just like, what the hell would you do this for? You know? So, um, so, so this is the thing, I guess this comes back to, to, to all, all things of success, right? I understand you work, you have a job, you're busy, you're cutting corners by going live. Are you cutting corners by going live because you don't want to put the time in to do it right? Or is there just really no time to do it? So I would rather you go live than not do anything. But I also think that if you could put a little bit extra energy in, you may be more successful. Yeah. Right. Oh, for but sure. if you cannot do it, if there's just no way you can do it, going live is better than doing nothing. Yep. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we got Tam. Tam says, hi, Brian and Jay. Happy New Year. I have a question for both of you. What would yeah. you consider your dream reptile? Uh, thanks. I told Jay via Instagram, I would chime in for a change instead of lurking. So here I am. Thank Perfect. You. Well, I appreciate you. Stop being a lurker. There, yeah. Don't there. be lurking. Yeah. You got to come hang out with lurker, us. You know, you, uh, um, gosh, I don't know what my dream God. reptile is, man. Come on you know, right I, now. I think it's Komodo dragon, right? I think that the two animals that are probably high on the list, uh, one of which I will never have, uh, I shouldn't say never, but very unlikely would be a king cobra. Yeah. Uh, and then secondly would be a Komodo dragon. I mean, those are probably the the, the dream animals for reptiles uh, right now. That doesn't mean there isn't other animals that are high up on that list. Yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, like, you know, there's a bunch of stuff I would love to have. Uh, but yeah, Komodo's really on my mind right now. Yeah, I'd think uh, the Black Dragon Water Monitor, Toothless yeah. My Boy, bro. And That's then amazing, yeah. I actually really like uh, Bush Vipers. Yeah, I really yeah, like Bush Vipers, yeah, so that yeah. might be something I would like to. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what we got next, fam. Uh, Don says, have you ever thought about any mangrove-type monitors? I'm thinking about a peach throat myself. Would love to fly over yeah. and visit someday. Please do. Well, please come visit. Seriously, yeah. And I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I could see all of that. You know, I mean, you know, a peach throats are really freaking cool. Um yeah, I, I mean, there's a whole, there's a lot of really cool monitors I would love to get, All you know, Gould's monitors and, and, uh, uh, you know, tricolored monitors. And, uh, I mean, there's just, a, the list goes on, not parentes obviously are like the pinnacle of, of monitors for me other than Komodos. Um, 
I mean, gosh, I, I, you know, I, I just would love to have an entire zoo full of monitors, you know? So I, by no means do I think I'm done with the monitor world. I mean, there's a lot more monitors I'd like to add over time when, especially if we expand, you know, there'll be more room for monitors. I think there'll be something that I'll, I'll put on. I don't see myself putting on a tremendous amount more snakes in the reptarium. I think there'll be a couple. Um, but I think that most of what I'll put on will be, Different uh, types of lizards. Yeah, lizards, maybe stuff, yeah. maybe some turtles, um, you know, some things like that. That you know, but but yeah, stuff that's a little bit more interactive. Uh, we've got a lot of cool snakes. I don't think we need that many more. I do want to have one big giant snake we can take out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like a twenty footer that we can take out. That is something that's high on my list, but uh, but that's going to take a little time. All right. So uh, Christine came back. Christine Kilroy says, uh -huh. I hope FedEx gets back to normal in regards to shipments so I can get you your Samboas, which may include a couple of my holdback oh. Paradox albino stripes. Oh, my gosh. They are so sexy, man. Oh, she, that sounds great. I know. Christine, you're, 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 you're talking lovely. dirty to me. You're, you're, you're talking dirty with <laughs> that Samboa talk. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Daddy. Oh, what, man? I'm going to have to take a bathroom break. <laughs> a cold shower real <laughs> quick. Yeah, cold. No, thank you. And, and yeah, it will get back. I mean, you know, it will. We, we're still shipping, but it's uh, it, it can be a... It it's been be a bear. A, it can be a drag. Yeah. I mean, poor Beth, you know, uh, <laughs> she spends a big portion of her day ripping our representative from FedEx. Apart. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I feel terrible for him, but he 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 hangs in there and he gets everything. We we haven't, you know, knock on wood, we haven't lost anything this year, uh, this COVID season. Um we've had packages lost for days, but the animals have all arrived alive because we've learned how to ship where something can be lost for three days and still get there. And still 90% of our shipments get there either on time or within an hour of the deadline. Uh, 10%, I would say get delayed by a day and yep. then very few have been two or three days. Uh, but, but because of the way we pack, we've been able to get there. Uh, Skittle bunny says oh, well, <laughs> the daily vlogs are the only constant in my life and my goal this thank year you. is to meet you and Noah in person at the reptarium love y'all happy new year well thank you i really hope you will and and let us know when you do come so noah can come uh to the reptarium and meet you because he doesn't come here often well he comes here during the week but during uh open weekend, uh, yeah on the weekend he's not here much so uh so we'd love let to us know let us know and we'll get him over here uh martin exotics actually threw five dollars for the same message uh, that we did earlier. It said, Happy New Year's. My breeder males went off food. Not sure to uh, be happy or mad. So I don't know if it was a mistake, but sorry, brother. Well, thank you, man. Thanks for the love. It. Yeah, thanks for the love, man. Aaron threw a dollar just for love. Aaron, thank you. Elizabeth Lennon says, Thanks for the advice. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Like I said, I'm, that's what we're here for. That's what I want this podcast to be is advice the 32 years. And this is what I was going to say before I get into anything else. Is yeah, that, I just have a couple left, so we're okay, good. Okay, so is that... Um, Again, you know, it, that 32 years is a lot, you know, it's, it's a lot of experience and, and we've seen a lot of different things, you know, and again, that doesn't make me better than anyone. It doesn't make me, you know, it doesn't mean that a 20 year old kid isn't more uh, knowledgeable than me and, and more talented even necessarily. It's just that the experience, uh, you can't buy experience. Yeah, you can't. You can't. It's just, it just, I've seen more scenarios then that's a good word for it, it, scenarios yes, than almost anyone. And, and so that's, that's why I want to give that advice out. And I want you guys to understand that I'm not in any way ever thinking I'm better than anyone or thinking that I, I know more than anyone. It's just literally the amount of hour I've not only 32, almost 33 <laughs> years, but a hundred hours plus a week of 33 years. How many know? snakes do you think you've seen? Oh, it's in millions, the millions. It's right? in the millions. No, yeah. it's in the millions. That, in and the that millions, alone, yeah. like just those things, every time a snake breeds, a new thing is possible to happen that you didn't know before. So yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, every time you see a baby, you see this, and so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's been a great life. I'm very blessed that I've been able to see that what I've seen. You know, it really is. But um, and, and like I said, I've learned a lot over the last two or three years about things. Because again, I was a snake guy. Now I'm a lizard slash, you know amphibian slash turtle guy too sloth and, and man so yeah sloth vlogger guy sloth, podcast yeah, guy yeah so I, yeah i've learned a lot and, and and i still have a lot to learn but uh you know again i i would be remiss if i said even though i've spent gazillions of hours researching sloths and now had a sloth for two and a half years if i if i if you came on here for a second and tried to tell you anything about sloth i'd be an idiot because i'm that's not what i am i don't know enough about sloths you know i'm learning i will learn i hope one day i'll be you know a sloth guru but <laughs> But uh, right slothy now, guru, dude. Yeah, slothy guru. But right now, uh, I'm not. 
Um, Crystal said, been a fan since Snake Bites. Mm. Thanks for the good, the bad, the real, and the ugly. Love the content. You're very relatable. Thank you, Crystal. And, and that's the thing, so, right, is I always try to take you guys on the journey of the truth, and, and that sometimes isn't always pretty, you know, and uh, um, that was why when I did come out with the anxiety video, it was so powerful for me is because cause I felt like I had been keeping something from you guys yep. for a few months before I, I came out, and that's something I don't do. You know, I don't keep anything from you guys, and, and, and listen, you know, over the years, I've done things, and I've taken a lot of heat for being honest, you know, showing uh, animals die, you know, showing some of the tragedies, and, um, and, and it, it's something that happens to everybody, and I feel like if I was not going to be honest about it why would i do what i do yeah and, and uh but but that's to my own demise i mean you know i've been honest and 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 then given lots and lots of ammunition to people that want to see me fail but uh but i don't care about that anymore i really don't i don't i i, I want to just be honest and, I, and if if my honesty not only about the way animals are and the care and the and, and the experiences as well as my mental health if that somehow goes against me then so be it because i know it's going to help somebody and, uh, and that means more to me than some asshole that's going to try to tear me down because they're jealous of me or, or they're, they're unhappy with their life and they feel the only way they can find happiness is to make other people miserable. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I, I, don't, I don't give those people one minute. And that's part of the anxiety talk I'll talk about is that I don't give, I don't, I, there's a saying that says, don't let people rent space in your head for free. Um, I don't let that happen anymore. Perfect. Uh, Let Roses Burn says, oops, I've been lurking this whole time. Oh, sneaky bitch. What? Nah, she's always here. We, no, always, appreciate know, you, we always know you're here. I look at your, your rendition of me every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing on the planet. Yeah, I've never seen anything so <laughs> perfect, seen anything Mr. Mark so Jagger. So perfect so in my life. <laughs> Uh, Becky says, uh, <laughs> I'll say this again. You're an amazing and I absolutely love your vlogs and podcasts. I will definitely meet you in person someday. Thank you. Why? Well, sure. I, I, I hope you do I hope you come you come visit us and have a good time. And thank you so much for your support. And let me get one thing straight. You know, uh, and again, this, will, this goes back to anxiety as well as the fact that I don't look at myself probably the way you just said that, right? And that's probably one of the things I'm working on more than anything is to self-love, right? Um, I, I was raised uh, and was Into surrounded, primity. yeah, to, to be taught that I was no good and that um, that I'd never amount to anything. And, and even as I was becoming more successful, uh, still you know, that feeling was with me that I was never good enough, that my voice didn't matter no matter what I said wasn't good enough, no matter what I did, was never going to be good enough. And and I really didn't have, not only did I not have self-confidence, but I certainly didn't have self-love, right? And, and and to the point where I made mistakes where I was looking for love in the wrong areas too, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like yeah. you know, you can't go into the comment section of YouTube and expect those people uh, to make you feel good about yourself, you know? Uh, although, you know, I have an amazing comment section, uh, that's not where I can gather self-worth right? Right, uh, right, right right because you, you guys see what we put out you, you guys don't you know i mean i think on the podcast you see more of the real me oh for sure um because it's not produced it's not edited it's raw and everything like that but uh but certainly you know i'm working on uh like i'll give you an example you know you you making a comment about me being a great person or whatever that typically makes me very uncomfortable you know, very, uh, it's, it's almost like I shy away. Like, you know, when I'm in person and someone meets me in person and says something really nice to me, I typically, you know, you will see, I you'll make, see he'll, he'll yeah. put his head down like a little bit and be like, Oh, yeah. well, thank you. I yeah, appreciate yeah, it. I but it's never don't, like, yeah, I don't make eye contact at that nope. point. You know, I'm usually you know, squirmish, it, it, squeamish. And, 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 uh, I'm trying to get better at that. I'm trying to get better at accepting compliments and, and hoping that we are making a change in the world as, as little as that may be. Um, every bit counts and, uh, but that comes back to self-love and self-confidence. And it's something that I've dealt with really badly my whole life. And that ultimately is a big root of my anxiety. Uh, and again, we'll hit these last couple of super chats and we'll get talking about that too. Uh, Josh, that's our boy. He's come to a couple events here at the Reptarium, Josh Vanellen. And, uh, he said, hockey's back. That is all LOL. Krista yeah, Josh, and I yeah. are going to make a trip soon with gifts. Finally got our incubator and waiting for some eggs to put in it, all because of your inspiration. Yeah, Josh is a good guy. He's a, hockey, he's a he says hockey is back. I'm, I'm wondering if he's talking about the NHL, because I don't think you can play hockey in Michigan yet. Maybe you can. I don't know. Uh, but uh, NHL will be back on the 13th. 
I just talked to Bernsey, you know, I was texting with him a couple of days ago uh, and he just got on a plane to go to They're They're uh, in Arizona now because oh, wow. they can't play in San Jose. Um, so the team, the whole team's the, in. The team's wow. That's really Arizona. crazy. Now I don't know if they'll play games in San Jose eventually, but right now uh, it's illegal. Or not, it's, it's against the rules to, to have uh, sports in uh, Northern California. So, um, so they can't play in their home arena but we'll see you soon bro but yeah definitely josh and good luck with your incubator yeah uh laura said hey you're from straya uh thanks for the uh does that say verve 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 Uh, to get a coast thank you for telling me to get a coastal python i guess a painted dragon a pair of long nosed dragons and a pair of southern angle headed dragons wow those are all awesome animals and uh thank you from, from oz um, love Australia. We can't wait to get back. I can't Australia. wait to take J to oh my Australia. God, I'll flip, dude. Um, yeah, it's going to be, a, he's going to love it there. He's going to love everybody there. You're, gonna they're all going to love me too, dude. I'm going to oh, take yeah. Australia by storm fam. Yeah. Yeah, you dude. look like you could come from the outback a little bit. Yeah, why? Yeah. That's crazy fam. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll do good, dude. It's going to no, be a it's blast. It's going to be good. Trust me, it, 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 when Australia allows Americans <laughs> back into the country. Yeah, we're not exactly... Um, there, I'll yeah. be there. So hopefully by the end of 2021, I mean, I know I keep saying that I want to go on all these trips and eventually there's only so many trips I can take in 2021, especially cause it's probably only, don't worry the about the year. Half. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, we will get to Australia. I would like to get there in the winter. So I'm there in the summer. Uh, you know, I, I tend to go to, to Australia oftentimes in their, your guys' winter, which is the worst time for me <laughs> For to you, go. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. You know, as a matter of fact, it was funny. A few <laughs> years ago, I think it was three or four years ago, I spent literally almost the entire summer here in the, the southern hemisphere for, in winter, in Africa and Australia. And Australia, no. And so, so literally, I, I think I was, I missed the entire summer. So I, you like, winter, you double winter. I doubled wintered. I wintered. Oh. I went, now, the winters in Australia and in, in Africa were, were not as bad as Michigan. Michigan, but uh, but still, it's like I, I, I missed summer, almost the entire summer. That's I not easy. Because I was in the southern hemisphere. So I'll try to reverse that trend and start going in the winter. Try to hit only and, summer and, for yeah, now. Yeah, hit, hit summer for a year. <laughs> Kristen says, uh, this is the first live of yours that I have ever caught. Finally mm. popped my live cherry. Oh my gosh. I, ooh, ooh. Chris, you're yeah. not the first one I've ooh. done that to. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I hope you have a great night. You uh, too, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you caught us live. I appreciate you so much, and I hope that you're enjoying it. All right, we got a couple questions for you. Favorite Bam. Taipan? Uh, no. Coastal. 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 And is, this is a new snake seeker. Better choice, jungle carpet or Colombian red tail boa? That's a hard one, man. Those are yeah, two I, bangers. I, yeah, I think that Colombians are better snake overall. You know, jungle carpets are a prettier snake, but they're probably not going to be as good of a pet, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, they don't handle the same way as a Colombian would. So I think uh, I think they're they're definitely in. And yeah, I, I think anyone that is into Taipans would tell you that coastals kick inland ass, you know? Inlands are just boring compared to coastals, quite frankly. Fighting words. Yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Inlands are the most deadly snake on the planet, but... You still would, I would muck with a, a an inland uh, any day of the week over a coastal, you know, any day of the week. Uh, Alexa says, I hope one day you can look back and understand just how many people you have helped. You are my role model and I love you and your crew and I'm about to cry, man. That's no, beautiful. I appreciate it. And I hope, I, you know, Alexis, I, I, I pray that I will get there and, and I, I will get there. I That's will right, get man. there. It's, it, it's it, you know, uh, it's hard you know, it's hard when you, for 50 years you've been beaten down by the people you love. And I don't mean my, like Lori and Jade and Noah. I mean, you know, my, my uh, immediate, immediate yeah, my, my birth family. Um, it, it's difficult, you know, it's difficult and, and, and it's not easy to, to, to change. The, the longer you are in a pattern, the harder it is to change that pattern. And so when you think very lowly of yourself, you know, it's funny, like, you know, think about comedians, right? They say, mm-hmm. you know, 99% of comedians, uh, you know, are so sad that they get up on stage to try to make other people happy with the thoughts that maybe they're going to somehow find happiness by making other people and they're usually comedians are usually the most tormented, tortured people. people. Yeah. And, 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 and not just, just comedians, but really creative people. The most, the more creative you are, the more tortured you are mentally typically. And, uh, you know, that's why most musicians are drug addicts and, mm-hmm. and, and the list goes on and on. Uh, it's just a reality of, of like the more creative, 
the, the your brain works different. Yeah, you have to. There's no way to be yeah. like that's why normal people are normal, right? And right. they don't come up with new inventions or new art forms or whatever. You have to be kind of different in order to have a brain yeah. that thinks that way. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I try. I tell people this all the time, and Jay probably sees glimpses of it more than anybody you know certainly laurie and Noah and everyone else knows you know i i'm i'm a i'm a extremely quirky person oh my god you know? so quirk. and and <laughs> and like i i try to act normal as much as i possibly can but in my head i'm very 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 quirky and and that's because of my i i i, I laugh and i've always said that you know in my bio i wanted to say i'm a creative tornado that's because, a good one because you know i'm super creative but i'm also i will like destroy everything around me because of my creativity uh i go in and i just i make every i mean you know my my staff is always like you know, I'm always, I come up with a new idea. I got a new URL. I got a new this, I got this. And they're just like, oh, slow down, Brian, slow down. And and some people are that way. But unfortunately, when you're that way, typically you're a lot more tormented, you know, and, and, uh, um, and, 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 you know, I don't know if your, your brain is wired that way from birth or if, if it's something that my creativity slash, you know, ironically enough, my torture also is the reason for my success. Yeah, I was going to say. And, and, and it is probably for most people. You know, I don't know. There's not a lot of successful. And, and, and again, success is, a, is something that is, is, it can be measured in a million things. As me, I look at success now as happiness. Yeah. And, and, and contentment and peace and Freedom. neutrality. Freedom is a big and, one. And yeah. yeah. And, and, um, uh, and I think the community, the world thinks of success as money and materials and, and, and all that stuff. And, and it's very difficult, I think, to have both. You know, I don't know any like financially successful people that are truly happy people. No. And, and that's very difficult. That's a tough thing. And so that's the quest in life is to be both to be both somehow. And, and don't get me wrong, I will forego some of my success financially because of my quest for happiness and peace and tranqu tranquility. And, and that's a difficult thing too, right? Uh, but it's worth it. For sure. And this uh, is my buddy, Matt, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, it says, uh, Matt said, I need to come out and we can chat about geckos and our friendship over the past 10 years for yeah. the people. Yeah, actually, to Matt, I would love to have Matt on on the podcast. Please come out, dude. I, I mean, Matt is a guy that uh, we we talk. We've been talking because our our, our work schedules haven't been as is you know is is easy to to hook up lately over the last little bit. But he's been on vacation the last week or so, and and so we've talked almost every single day. And there was a period of time where me and Matt talked really once or twice a day, every single day for oh, wow. a couple of years on the phone. He's he's out in uh, on the East Coast. Used to be from Pennsylvania, and now lives in Connecticut. Um, but, uh, you know, big gecko guy, uh, as a matter of fact, the majority of our gecko colony started with his geckos. Uh, so I think that having him on the podcast, not only would be interesting talking about geckos and, and the kind of history of geckos, cause much like me with ball pythons, he is with gecko, leopard geckos. Oh, wow. Um, so he knows everything about all the, the inner parts of, of leopard gecko world that even I don't know. Uh, but the, at, at the same time, um, you know, like he said, you know, just our friendship and, and, and what we've been through. We've talked about all kinds of different things over the last, you know, personal things over the last. It'd be a really good podcast. So, yeah, Matt, come out, please. It'd be really good. All right. I'm going to do these in opposite order just to because okay. uh, we'll end on that one. So oh, yeah. Laura said, LOL, guys, it's verve. I just looked it up. It's <laughs> verve and it's spirit right. and enthusiasm. I've never heard that word before. So thank you for I've, I've heard learning. it, actually. But Australians are just nuts. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't Australians know what you were talking nuts. about. Who knows what you're fucking talking about? Fam. Go eat your fucking maggot pie. <laughs> Living J uh, says, hi, Brian. I've been watching your vlogs for a year or so. And now I'm thinking about getting a snake. I love the Dumeril's boa. And I found some adult males from a reputable breeder. Yeah. Uh, our Dumeril is a good first snake. Yeah, they they are they're great. so they're, sick. They're, they're really good. I mean, they're they're I think they're better than boa constrictors. Uh, they're a larger snake, but they're not too large. Males stay even smaller typically, even though our bread loaf is pretty big. Um, you know, they're they're I think yeah, if you're from a reputable breeder, they're doing well. So on like that, absolutely, I think a Dumeril's boa is is a rocking animal, and I think that it's uh they probably if they were going to be produced in the the volume that say a boa constrictor. Uh, common bow is produced. I think they'd be more more popular. Uh, the only thing that they're missing is is mutations. I think yeah. there's there's a hypo out there. I don't know if it's been reproduced yet. Uh, which, can you punch that up? Hypo Dumeril's bow. Yeah. I'm just curious if there's any pictures. I mean, a very beautiful animal. It was produced over in Europe years ago. Uh, I know they made it over here to the states. 
Um, no, I don't see any. No, I don't see any any pictures of the actual okay. hard popers, uh, dumerals. Really interesting animals, almost a T positive ish type of thing. But I don't. Huh. It's been a number of years, so I'm assuming that if they didn't get produced yet, they haven't been produced, or it wasn't genetic, or something. Uh, who knows, along the something lines. was going on with it. But uh, uh, that's the only thing they're missing. If there was some mutations, and again, you got to remember that their appendix one endangered, so you can't export them out of Madagascar. So you're not getting Madagascar's already getting decimated. Weirdly enough. In Madagascar, there's, there's of course, there's the, the, the du, du, you know, these are uh, uh, Acrantophus dumerilli, and then there's uh, Acrantophus madagascarinensis, which is the Madaga- the Malagasy or Madagascan ground boa. So is And it, so, yeah. so in, in, in the U.S. and in, in Europe, the Malagasy ground boas or Madagascan ground boas are the more rare. In Madagascar, it's actually opposite. So There's crazy. more Malagasy ground boas. So Dumeril's boas are actually pretty rare in Madagascar, but they've been bred in the in the States and in Europe for a lot longer, so there's a lot more Dumeril's. But unfortunately, there's no mutations, and that's the one thing that holds them back. So, um, so yeah, that's that. That. So so let me just, you know, before we get too far, I mean, we've covered a lot of stuff, and we've been on, on here for a while. I don't want to, you know, have too little time for anxiety talk, but I do want to just go over a little bit and, and let me know in the comments and in the chat, if you want to know more about this, you're more than welcome to super chat. If you have questions about anxiety. Um, so anxiety is, is, you know, is a tough thing because, uh, especially now the world, so many people, anyone that even had a little anxiety probably has a lot more anxiety now that, that, you know, COVID is out there and stuff like that and the way the world is and the uncertainty and stuff like that. But, you know, all anxiety really stems from the, a wounded child, right? You know, so so uh, things that happen in your past cause you to think differently and become anxious, you know. Yes, there's a chemical nature to it, but but chemicals are controlled by thought, right? Um, and, and, and the way an, an anxious person feels is and thinks is oftentimes very different than a normal person. You know, someone like Lori has never had anxiety in her life. She doesn't understand anxiety because she doesn't think beyond anything, right? Like an anxious person typically has got racing thoughts all the time. They're thinking the worst case scenario. They're, they're you know, thinking out every scenario possible, right? Like, okay, what could happen in this case, right? And the saying is always that, you know, anxiety lives in the future, depression lives in the past. But both anxiety and depression typically start from wounding as a child, you know? And so the idea of, of anxiety and getting over anxiety is, is really to stop the brain waves, the way that they work, you know, the way that you're, you, you've been wired your whole life, the way you think something's called CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to, uh, again, when something comes into your brain and you start spinning out of control, what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing? You've got to stop that and you've got to turn it into something positive. You've got to stop that thing. Some t- and there's a million different ways of doing it. One thing I do is meditation. I, I wake up every morning to a meditative uh, routine that I do. Uh, I also journal uh, about the thoughts and things are like Jay and I, and, and well, we were all heading down to Florida to pick up Drogo and, um, and, and, uh, um, yeah, I was having a really tough time. It's the first time we traveled, you yeah. know, since since the you know since I, I was anxious in the pandemic, and uh, the trip down there was really bad. I now at that point I was starting to get better, right? I went went from like five or six months of being horrible, 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 and I was going to, to therapy, you know, three to four times a week, um, and I was feeling better. And, and I went on that trip and it was probably the worst day I had had in months, you know, a couple months. Um, and, and I remember uh, talking, ironically enough, I, I talked to my psychiatrist on the phone and she said, write down the things that you're bothering, you know, that's bothering you. And then write out what the worst case scenario is, like in reality, like what could happen here? What is actually going to happen here? Get that out of your brain. You want to stop the cycle of thinking about it. Get it out because it whirls around like a little roller coaster or a little fucking, you know, uh, uh, merry-go-round. It's just yeah. going to keep going around and around. So I, there was three things that were bothering me. Uh, and, and one of them, for, for instance, was, you know, 
is Drogo going to be okay? Yeah. Can, can we take care of Drogo? Is this the right decision? Are we going to be able to do things? So, so we, uh, we went over that and, and, and again, talked about it as a group. About it as a group. You know, I wrote down these things and we talked about what the worst case scenario is and, and, and everyone in the car reassured me this and that and this and that. And all of a sudden these, these calamities that I thought were impossible to get past all of a sudden seemed very doable. Right. Um, they seem, it seemed like, okay, this can work, you know, I mean, okay. And, and, and the anxiety lightened up. So it's always about the way you think about things. Now, don't get me wrong. The one, let me tell you something. And I'm glad that as many people are hanging with, with me as they can. Uh, because again, if you're not anxious, you're going to find someone that is going to be anxious. And I want you to understand a few things about it. Number one, the worst thing you can ever tell a person that with anxiety is to stop worrying about things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because that's impossible. It, it, it's like telling someone that's depressed to stop being sad. Yeah. It's not a decision we make, you know, and, and let me just tell you, there were times Jay saw it with me that I couldn't read. Like I, oh, I, yeah, I would look easy. at a word and I could not understand just what like that word. Just like shaky blur all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, I mean, my mind couldn't think. I couldn't think, Pat. I mean, you guys have heard me talk now for two hours straight. Uh, I couldn't put a sentence together at times. You know, everything is cloudy. You're disconnected. You don't feel like you're even in your body. You're dizzy. You're, you're, um, you, you know, the, the physical symptoms, it's not just like, oh, I'm worried. Oh, I'm anxious. No, it's physically disabled. Uh, debilitating uh, and, 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 and like I had said earlier, it isn't a contest who's worse, right? I mean, I was as bad as I could be. If I was any worse than I was without the unbelievable mental stamina that I had, I would have killed myself. Okay. That doesn't mean someone else doesn't have more mental stamina and, and could be worse than me. I don't know. And this isn't a game about like, oh, I'm worse than you. What I'm saying is that I was bad. I was really, 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 really bad. I mean, to the point where it was uh, literally unlivable. So, but the thing I say is that you can't be, so, so if you're mentally, your mental health is bad, anxiety, depression, whatever the case may be, the one thing you got to remember is you can't settle for that. Too many people settle for being mentally ill and not doing anything about it, right? They think, well, I'm just anxious and I guess that's just the way I'm going to have to deal with my life. That is not acceptable to me. It isn't acceptable. If you're anxious, you can get better. If you are depressed, you can get, get better. And this is coming from someone that is mentally ill. Right. I'm not a guy that is like, you know, uh, you know, just a motivational speaker and trying to tell you something that doesn't understand it. And that's one of the problems with therapy oftentimes is that, just gonna say that, you know, two of the three therapists that I saw on a consistent basis had never dealt with anxiety in their life. How do you do that? And it's very difficult for them to understand and empathize. They empathize with me, but they don't understand don't what sympathize. I'm going through. They don't understand the physical feelings that I have. It doesn't mean that they aren't sympathetic to me, empathetic to me. It just means that they don't understand what I'm going through. One of the guys, would ha which happens to be the anxiety guy on YouTube, a guy named Dennis, did understand. He, he, had been, he He's not a psychologist. He didn't go to school. But he went through a very similar terrible anxiety disorder like I went through. And then he learned ways to get better. Now he spends his time on YouTube and even in through, uh, through therapy, personal therapy, helping people get over those things through a, a direct path to that success. Now I can't speak a lot on, uh, on, on, uh, depression because although depression and anxiety are very closely related, the very same chemicals that are being released. Uh, I, I don't know the only depression that I felt was the depression of my anxiety, right? But I will say this, so I've had two bouts of anxiety in my life, bad bouts. I've dealt with anxiety on and off my life, but but not, nothing that was, you know, I mean, you guys know, I've traveled the world, I've talked in front of thousands of people, I've done the most uncomfortable things you can possibly imagine, so anxiety never held me back. But twice, this time that I'm just getting better from, and about 18 years ago, I went through a period that took me about a year to get better. And, uh, um, you know, this time, the last time it didn't happen, this time it's happened maybe four or five days, I woke up and I think I felt depressed. And yeah, we, and, I remember those. Yeah, and those were days that I felt emotionless. Like I had no right. connection at all. Yeah. Everything felt dead to me. And that was, I'll be honest with you, was a worse feeling than anxiety. Uh, so if that's what depression feels like, which is what I think it is. It's pretty similar, it's, yeah. It's freaking horrible. And I don't, I, I can understand how people lose that battle. I really do because it's a, it's a horrible, horrible battle to go through. 
that being said, um, you've got to do something about it, right? And I, I and I've said this before, Jay. You've heard me say this before. If you're 50 pounds overweight, you don't eat at McDonald's and 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 think you're going to lose weight, right? You you eat healthy and you go to the gym. And that's acceptable. Everybody knows that. Everyone does. Everyone goes on a diet or goes right. to a gym or does whatever. But yet with mental health, people don't think of it the same way. It's not you, even taught like that either. No, you have to go to a mental gym is what you have to go to. You have to mentally work your brain the same way you would physically work your body to lose weight, right? You can't expect your brain to get better if you do nothing about it. Okay. So I went to therapy and thankfully I have the means, you know, I have the money, I have the means, I have whatever the lifestyle that I can go to therapy four times a week. Most people can't do that. I understand that, but you can look on YouTube and check up the anxiety guy or the million other people on YouTube that have amazing messages and self-help yourself. Cause I wasn't just going to therapy. I was doing the self-help videos. I was reading audio or listening to audio books on self-help. Uh, I was doing all kinds. I was constantly trying to work towards mentally. Yeah. If we that. weren't filming the vlog, just so you guys know, like he was doing something to work on his mental health. Like if yeah, we weren't doing yeah. something he needed direct attention on, it was meditation, talking to somebody, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and I was I was on a path where I was like, I am not going to settle. And, and the downside other thing too is that most therapists you'll go to that specialize in anxiety will talk about how you have to become... Uh, you have to learn to live with anxiety oh, yeah. and that's bullshit. That's, that's how it's taught though. Bullshit. And that's, that is bullshit, but that is actually how, like when a therapist tells you, you have depression, anxiety, ADHD, bipolar disorder, whatever, they just tell you, you have that, yeah. give you a script. And now you just say, okay, I have this now. Yeah. And that's not well, how it just, needs to be. It's not, you can, you can conquer it and you can get away from it. Am I over it a hundred percent? No, I'm not. There are days I feel a hundred percent over it. And there are days that I don't feel a hundred percent over it. Yesterday I felt great. I felt fantastic from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep. Didn't you couldn't, eat, I, it was like anxiety wasn't even in my life, you know, Ever, yeah. a couple days ago I went to therapy and I, I do this, it's called the burns, uh, uh, therapy, uh, anxiety, Whole. And and it's from uh, Dr. Burns. He wrote, he's written quite a few books on, on, on anxiety and depression. And um, I can't remember what the name of the books are because I read one of them, an anxiety book. And it was really, it was, uh, it was called uh, uh, something panic. Oh shoot. I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can find tons of books on it, but I do this thing and, and literally uh, like, you know, it, it tallies a number and the number is, you know, it tells you you're mildly anxious, you know, extremely, moderately, extremely anxious, whatever case is. And I mean, you know, like I think 10 is like mild anxiety. And my, in, in, in three, four days ago, I was two, two. And, and literally under 10 is like, you're not, you have no anxiety. Yeah. And now to give you an idea, a hundred is like, you're fucking dead yeah. type of thing. I was in like the eighties yeah. when, 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 when I started, you know? So, so I mean, I went from the eighties to two, you know, now some days I'm going to be eight. Some days I'm going to be six, probably not going to get over 10 anytime soon is if I can, if I can do it. But, but, you know, on new year's Eve, I didn't feel that good. I felt, I felt, you know, kind of pretty, pretty shitty most yeah. of the day. Um, now that night, Jay and, and, and some friends came over and, and I had a great night and my anxiety went away. And then yeah. I woke up the next day and felt great today. I haven't felt that great. Yeah. To be totally honest with you. I've been a little off today, felt a little better in the afternoon. Uh, right now I feel okay, but not great. You know, I'm, I'm hanging in there. So it's a, it's an ebb and flow. It's not like it just has gone away uh, yet, but I will, I guarantee you that in the next two, three months, whatever the case may be, there will be the rare day that I feel like this. If ever, it will be a hundred percent. And that's because I won't settle for less and I will work my way through it. And again, working your way through it, through, through doing things like meditation, there's really, you know, three things. Uh, now I'll lay just a little bit on you here is that there's three things. There's things you're going to do for yourself, like meditation, right? You are basically meditating and you're, 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 you're calming your brain waves. You're changing your brain chemistry to say, calm down. You're, you're you know, letting everything go. You're clearing your brain. You're stopping the racing thoughts, all these things. And that, that makes you feel immediately well, right? But that's not going to cure you. It's going to help you, but it's not going to cure yeah, it's you. It's like a Tylenol. Then, then there's something that is is like you know a, a, a image cycle where you are literally 
in a meditative state, but you're going into say, and, and I use what they call the gray room effect. And Dennis, the anxiety guy uses this technique is that you meditate in the sense that you're going into a gray room in the middle of that gray room. There's a pit of fire. Okay. Now on the walls, there are black pieces of paper. And you actually walk over to those black pieces of paper and in your mind, you write down the things that are bothering you, fear, anxiety, worry, insecurity, uncertainty, whatever the case is, you write it down and then each one at a time you take it out and you emotionally crumple it up and you throw it in that fire and you see that fire burn it up and you throw each one of those things into the fire. Now on the other side of the gray room, they are blank black papers and you want to take those and you want to write on those black pieces of paper in this meditative state what you want out of life happiness peace joy contentment whatever those things are and you take them off the wall and emotionally you fold them up and you put them in your back pocket you see yourself putting them in your back pocket and then when you're done with all of that you walk out of the room and that ends that session. The last thing you want to do is you want to reframe those wounding child moments, right? When your mom did something to you that wounded you to the point where you literally have carried that the whole, your whole life, that moment of insecurity, safety, lack of control, all of those things, lack of, of, of self-confidence, lack of self-love. You take those moments and you, you, you think about those moments in that meditative state. And in that moment, you stop, you freeze frame that moment and, and you, you see that little Brian and now adult Brian walks into the room and the adult Brian takes little Brian and can, you know, just takes him and hugs him and says, it's going to be okay. I'm here for you. You're safe now. Adult Brian has little Brian's back. Okay. We're together. Okay. It is safe now. And then you go and you go to that person, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, and you tell them what you feel about what just happened and how wrong they were. And you do it however you want. If it's your brother and you need to beat the shit out of him in your dream, you beat the shit out of him in your dream. You do whatever it takes to make you feel better about that situation. And then in the end of that situation, you take a picture of that re resolution okay you've now reframed it from that negative feeling that you've had your entire life and you reframe it into this positive view that you took and you made little brian safe or whoever the name is right and you start to delete those bad moments of your life and if you use those three techniques meditative gray room reframing what's happening those three things are going to get you through everything. Okay? Yeah. And then you include that with the CBT where you sometimes say, let's say, let's say you get a bad thought in your mind. You stop that bad thought immediately with the trigger word, right? You say, stop. Now you go, it's going to be okay. Think something different. Stop that thought immediately. Train your brain. At first, it's going to feel uncomfortable, right? It's going to feel uncomfortable to stop your brain from thinking the way it's thought the last 50 years, or the last 20 years, or the last 15 years, whatever the case may be. But eventually, you don't even have to stop it because it stops automatically. You retrain your brain. You start using all these techniques, but spend time with yourself. You know, you are the most, mo most important person because you can't give love if you don't have love for yourself. That's right, baby. You know, and I'm working on that. Am I there? No. Do I love myself? Not as much as I'd like to. Do I feel confident in myself? Not as much as I'd like to. Am I lack of anxiety? Not as much as I'd like to. But I made a lot of strides. And the thing is, is that I could look on that six months of, t I, I call it hell. It was hell. Every fucking minute, hell. I could look on that and say, oh, poor Brian, look how bad I was. But, or I can say, I'm going to take this as a lesson and I'm going to change the rest of my life. And maybe when I change the rest of my life, I'm going to be able to help you guys change your life. Hell yeah. You know, and, and that's the end. And through success, whether it's breeding snakes or opening up reptile zoos or doing whatever you want to do, the fact is, is that none of that success matters unless you have contentment, peace, neutrality, you know, neutrality and love for yourself. None of it matters, period. So you have to get that in place before you get anything else in place because I'm telling you, you can become a multimillionaire. I'd like to ask Elon Musk if he's happy. Huh. 
Well, he'll even tell you straight up he's not happy. Of course he's, he's not happy. Yeah, he's he's like, what I do is not healthy for anybody no. at all. But I know what you're saying. I mean, I mean, me and you talk about this all the time, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I've told you, I mean, one of the first things you ever quoted me on saying was that I'm an experienced collector. Experience and what's collector. the, like, why is that? Why do I care about doing things, right? And, you know. Yeah, because the, life experiences mean more than money. Dude, when you're anything, the right? last day of your life. Yeah. Nothing else fucking matters, well, man. Well, it's funny. It's like, I watched the video today. Yeah. That that the guy said that he said, you know, there are papers that are written about people's last days on this planet. Yeah. And and psychologists asking what would you want to change in your life? And to a person, everybody will say, I wish I would have spent time with my family more. I wish I would have enjoyed my life more. I wish I would have traveled. Fact, I wish if, I would have went this. Yeah, even, you know, uh, AARP yeah. Uh, which of course is the you know whatever that fucking acronym old is people for things, old yeah. people right and and people that are over ninety in AARP they they ask the question these people were still alive of course they weren't dying but but they were in their very last day you know last, last years, years of life yeah. and they said what would you what advice would you give people when they you look back on your life and they said start enjoying life today. Yep. Don't wait for tomorrow because too many people wait for retirement to start caring. Yep. And that's not and guaranteed. That's not, no one's guaranteed anything. It's I, I love the saying that the only thing we all have in common is this very moment yeah. because we don't know if the next moment one of us is going to be here. That's right. You know, I mean, right now I could drop dead in three seconds. That's how I live my and, whole life, man. And, um, like for sure. It's you take control of that and understand that it is it is important to do whatever it is that you want to do and what you love to do yeah, because do you, you get love. one chance to do it. Right. And, and like I said, don't settle for anxiety. Don't settle for, 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 you know, depression. You know, it's not easy. It is not easy to come out of that shit. I mean, anyone that thinks it is, is it just has never been through it. Right. And you guys know, I don't take, I can't take like antidepressants. I can't take stuff. Right. And so, uh, you know, I have no choice but to get through this through therapy, counseling, cognitive behavior, cha you know, changing the way I think about things. That's the only way I can do it. And and the truth is, that's the longer term fix. If you're, and I'm not against medication. I'm not against medication. But I'm just saying that if you're putting a band aid on it, it's still there. The root cause is there, and you can get rid of that root cause. It's absolutely, as a matter of fact, Burns, the guy I talked about that wrote uh, the Panic book and in and, and the Depression book, that is very very famous. It's, you know, New York Times bestseller for. I think he wrote the first book in, in like the, the eighties and, um, he, t he was a psychiatrist. He is a psychiatrist and he used to be a pharmacological psychiatrist, which means that he prescribed medication to people and through his cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, work, he realized not only was it a better fix, but it was a long-term fix as compared to to putting a Band-Aid on medication. And now he still runs his practice. He does not prescribe any medication to any of his patients. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? You know, so so I'm just telling you, I know that, you know, some people didn't care for the anxiety slash depression talk, but it's important to me. It's, it's And as, a majority yeah. did. So it, look it, at it like that yeah. too. It's, it's important to me. It's it's more important to me to teach you guys and to, to, to give you guys hope uh, in, in what sometimes feels like a hopeless situation. And, and, and that means more to me than, than teaching you how to breed ball pythons. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, now yeah. I want to teach you how to breed ball pythons, <laughs> but, uh, but I want you to, I want to teach you how to be happy. And, and, and I'm not there. Don't think that I'm saying I'm there. I'm getting there. Uh, and I will get there and I will find that, uh, it's not, I won't find happiness. Happiness is all around it's us. It's been there. Yeah. It's all around us. Happiness is here. I will embrace happiness. I will embrace self-love. I will embrace self-confidence. Uh, those are things I will embrace. Am I there? No. Will I get there? Yes. And I think you can't, I don't think you can. I know you can. Um, you and, just need to know you can too. You just need to know it. And you need to understand that, uh, you, yes, maybe you're worse than I was but not much, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's a that's a weird one too, right? Because I'm telling you as somebody that's spent I uh, probably more time with Brian than any other human on earth oh, yeah, in absolutely. the last year, yeah, right? Absolutely. I would say so. 100%. And and I've also gone through anxiety and depression and I've also tried committing suicide and I've also been at the very worst where every day I was wanting to kill myself yeah. and there's, I mean, there's not a physical way to be much worse. Right. Like you're, if you were, you would be a vegetable. You wouldn't yeah. be moving because you right. already were 
could you know there was times where you were like would stand up and you would like get real lightheaded and almost yeah. fall over there's times yeah. where you said you like you said you couldn't talk yeah couldn't read so what else i mean worse than that is being dead yeah i mean it, it was yeah so, I, I was almost take, i was almost dead i was yeah. I, well it's like listen this is what i've said i i didn't live a, one day <laughs> yeah. i didn't live one day for six months i existed every yeah. day i was only existed never lived never lived um, there, there were brief moments, you know, I talk about Ivy, you know, I talk hmm. about Ivy, the green anaconda and how there were moments that I spent with Ivy in my worst days. And those were little moments that I almost forgot about the anxiety for a second because it was so special to see her interact with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and there was an energy about it that was, was, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things I did, this is another thing. And, and then I'll end the anxiety and we'll take the last super chats and, yeah. and get out of here is that, um, uh, uh, when I started getting better, I started to visualize things I was grateful for. Okay. So sometimes just like throughout the whole day, like I would maybe every hour I would take two minutes and I would visualize moments that made me happy. In one of those moments, I, 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 to a T, I was sitting in Ivy's cage and, and she climbed up my shoulder from yeah, my back yeah. and over towards <laughs> my face. Uh, without any, you know, provocation. We were just chilling. Yeah, yeah, just chilling. And and that, I remember looking over at her in disbelief, going like, I can't believe this is happening. And that moment I relived probably 2,000 times yeah. over the course of, of a two-month window while I was being grateful because I wanted to have grateful. And there were other moments too, uh, not just with animals, but with, with my loved ones um, that I relived. And I would, I would go through this progression of like these four five, six memories. And I would just take like two minutes, like 30 seconds on each thing. And I would, I would, I would feel the emotion that I felt when Ivy climbed over me. I would feel the emotion that I had in these particular situations. And, and, and that was what started to turn the corner yeah. is the gratefulness. You know, they say you can't be anxious and you can't be depressed if you're fully grateful. And you know um, the the reason why that that even is too is because like that is being in the moment, right? Like mm -hmm. that like being grateful like wow, like this is happening. Yeah. I can't believe this is happening. And then when you look back on that and you have that appreciate appreciation for things, it changes your perspective because yeah. we just talked about it before. 2020 sucked, right? And I, I made sure that when I did my, you know, everyone does their Facebook posts for 2020 or the end of the new year, mm -hmm. I made sure to be be very positive because for each horrible terrible thing that happened yeah. in all of our lives this year there's moments that were beautiful even if they were small so yeah. talk oh, about those is. right yeah and those are things you reflect on and i think that you know we'll all look back on 2020 as is a year might that might have caused a lot of death pain at all levels but i i hope that one day we'll look back on it as is the turning point to a beautiful future. I agree. And um, so that's what it is. What do we got with uh, Rhett? Rhett I'm going to, I got a couple before her and okay, then we'll, cool. we'll catch cool. up to her. Yep. RC yep. Exotic said, much love from Connecticut. Happy New Year, guys. Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year, RC. Thank you so much, man. Alexis said, and you kind of covered this, but if you have anything else, please uh, say it. It says, uh, Brian, what do you use for anxiety? Uh, my insurance expired last year, which means I can't get medications anymore. Yeah. So that's pretty much like, those yeah. are good tools that last yeah, like I said, medication is is a band aid. Uh, if if you can take medication and you can afford to take medication to help, but even when you take medication, uh, uh, you can become so so. It's it's hard to be therapeutic mm. when you're really anxious. So oftentimes, if you can take a medication to become therapeutic, uh, then you're in good shape. And right? you, but you now, still have to work. But you yeah. have to don't make the mistake of taking medicine and stop trying to better yourself. It's like using a crutch uh, forever, right? right? It's like a Band-Aid. You're going to eventually fall back. The medication yeah. is not going to work. You're going to run out. You're going to lose insurance. You're going to, whatever's going to happen. So if you do take medication, take it in, with the goal of getting off of it, right? Don't take medication for the rest of your life because eventually that's not going to cause, you, you, it's the root problem is still there. Fix the root problem and then you'll be fine. Uh, Let Roses Burn said, I used to journal years ago when I was really bad. I think I should start again. I have yeah. cyclic de depression. 
Yeah. Uh, so meaning cycli- uh, cyclical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, fall is the worst time. I'm feeling better, but my manic racing thoughts are starting because of the uncertainty of the new year. Yeah, it's scary. You know, it is. And, and of course, you know, uh, cyclical uh, and seasonal depression, you know, definitely get into light therapy, get into vitamin D. Those are the two major things, right? Start taking vitamin D supplements uh, and then get into, there's some really amazing light therapy boxes out there right now uh, that give off great UVB lights and uh, spend 10 minutes a day in front of those in the morning and particular as soon as you wake up because uh, you want uh, that that UVB to come into your body immediately as well as it helps your circadian rhythm go yeah uh, and it, that'll help you sleep better at night the other thing you can do for everybody is uh, uh, you know spend a few minutes every morning uh, uh, doing some working out do yeah. jumping jacks sit-ups get that uh, blood flow yeah three minutes three minutes the first hour of your day do something that gets your body going uh, and that will help your sleep schedule the light will help your sleep schedule. And if you need more uh, of that light therapy throughout the day because it's very gloomy during the winter, uh, 100% do it. But but those light therapy boxes are not that expensive now. And uh, so that's a good one. And as well as make sure your vitamin D, if you have the ability to get blood tested um, you know, uh, with an shot. endocrinologist, uh, see where your vitamin levels are. You might be surprised your vitamin D level may be really down. Ironically enough, vitamin D also is, is being... Um, uh, shown to be one of the most effective things against coronavirus. Oh, that's awesome. And also yeah. with that light box, you can hang out with one of your reptile friends and yeah, that gives yeah, good yeah. therapy too. It so. does too, absolutely. Uh, Mick D has two comments. It says, loving yourself doesn't mean liking yourself. It means treating yourself as though you are somebody you care about so you can do well. One what? love. And then said, sometimes we treat our geckos better than ourselves. Yeah, I think that, so for me on that, I think that the goal is to like and love yourself. Yeah. The goal is to do both. Um it, it, and, and it's not easy. Uh, right now, there's gaps in both of those things for me. But uh, uh, but uh, but but I'm working on it. And the goal is is to love yourself and like yourself uh, because you should. Because when yeah. you love yourself and like yourself, then people's opinions of you mean nothing. Yeah. Uh, and that's important because opinions of, of you should mean nothing except for the people that truly love you. Yeah. And when you have that, when you have that love for yourself, you carry yourself different. Yeah. You have more confidence. And guess what? A lot of people will start changing how even they feel about you yeah. because you're putting out different energy now, you know? Right. Uh, creme de la clutch. Love the name yeah, says, uh, Brian and Jay. Good evening, fellas. Finally caught alive. Working out absolutely helps. Yeah. Working out's a big part of it. That's uh, it, baby. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier. I just mentioned it uh, a minute ago. Um, it is important. I think that it changes your body chemistry. Um, not to mention, you know, uh, it, you know, you can burn off that, you know, that cortisol that, that causes anxiety, depression. Stress hormone, yeah. Um, you, 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 you know, the, yeah, your, your good, you know, cholesterol, uh, goes up and your bad cholesterol goes down, your, your sh- insulin levels go down. So you have less spiking of, of, uh, ups and downs. Uh, I mean, there's a million, million benefits to working out and, um, and, Maybe you know, more. yeah, I mean, you, you need to do it. I mean, it's a, it's for mental health. I talk about symbiosis between mental and physical health, right? Uh, I want to be mentally, uh, and physically good, right? I don't want to, you know, I think it's hard to be both without being both, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I think that you, you're, if you're physically not in, in the best chemical, in particular chemical, and you got to remember, everyone's different. I'm not talking about looking like an Adonis. I'm saying that if your vitamin levels are off and you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, blood pressure is up and, and, and all these other things, you're not going to feel good. No, your right? body's telling you it's in a panic. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yo, we need to figure something out before right. we die. So, yeah. And so you got to do both. You got to do both. So, uh, I believe, I believe that's important. Um, then let roses burn, uh, came back and said, going to look into those light boxes. Thanks for the idea. Please, seriously. You, you'd be so surprised at how good it is. Also try to look into a book called, uh, the power of now. It's Brian's favorite. Uh, it's seriously. one of my favorite books, uh, ever. And uh, it, it helped me a tremendous amount. So, uh, but that, but if you have seasonal depression uh, in particular, it, light boxes are will will change your life. Will change your life. That's and awesome. they're you, literally you can buy one for a hundred, hundred, maybe two hundred bucks at the most. Um, and, and and they're great. And like Jay said, you can put your bearded dragon out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> put it on your shoulder, and then that's a double whammy. Yeah, you get the two dragon is happy. I too. always talked about me and Maria like when we would have like a bad day or something, we'd come home and. Have snake therapy, man. You yeah. just chill out with your animals, relax yeah. a little bit. It doesn't help fully. It's more of the meditation. You know, yeah. it's a men- it's a temporary fix, but it yeah. does help you bring your anxiety down for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, every little bit helps. That's right, baby. 
That's it for right now. Well, I tell you what, guys, uh, love you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for the people that did stick around for the anxiety talk. It's very important to me. Uh, Let me know if you guys want me to talk more about it. I will next week talk mainly reptiles. I don't think I'll get into mental health next week, Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. And if you guys need anything, reach out to me. I'm here for you. I believe in you. uh, And I love you guys so much. So happy new year. Uh, Thanks for the first podcast of the year. I hope it went well and uh, love you guys so much. So um, again, subscribe hit that like button, uh, do all those things. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the other sources. And uh, I tell you what, I'll see you guys Wednesday on Checking In. Have a good Woo! one, guys. Thanks Peace so out, much. guys. See you guys. That's good. <laughs>